Dodge Rodimo, Mike O'Mara writes here. That's why every day we insist you refer to it as your Cotton Pick and Donna Mike show. Number one, huh? Uh, they are the number one syndicator, Mike. Wow, I didn't know Number that. one syndicating company in the world. It's pretty incredible. Yes. <laughs> and we are now one of the jewels in that crown. Ah, uh, it's nice to be part of the family jewels. Even though we're so happy with Westwood One now, it still sucks that we have to work for Ken Stevens. Yeah. He, of course, is the reptilian-like general manager of radio station WJFK in Washington, D.C. Husband to Roz, absentee father to Douglas. Right on. Then you have Jeremy Coleman. You know, the guy from the prison. Yes, with the sheriff, Sheriff Head. Jeremy Coleman, the program director. Ken's number two. Big Daddy Mel, who rules the world for from New York City. And much love for Big Daddy Mel. And, of course, our agent, Junior Soprano in Chicago. That's the chain of command. I hope I got you know the drill soccer mom, the hood, Big and Junior. Mr. Moving away to the back of the midnight band. And look, I have just whipped this thing out. It's brown, like your uniform. <laughs> <laughs> it's brown, all right. <laughs> oh, it's brown. Uh, listen, it's another perfectly executed over to this big time major market radio show. Yeah. Arbitron rate is strong with five million kooky, crazy listeners. Here he is to my left and to your right today, because it is his 55th birthday. It's his birthday. No jokes. Simply our friend. Michael J. Siffy. <laughs> Hi, Don. Hi, Mike. Oh, happy, Hi. Birthday, Hi. Buzz. happy birthday, Thank Buzz. You. Thank you both. Happy double nickel, Buzz. Yeah. And welcome to the show, everybody. We will have uh, some birthday fun from Buzz coming up on today's show. Oh, mm. he's going to have some special fun today. Mm. I thought those girls might be here. Now, will someone check with the producer <laughs> to find out if Buzz's girls are here? Check uh, with our tricky producer. I, wa I want to let everybody in on something. Yeah. Uh, I am now enjoying the fun that Mike enjoyed yesterday at this time. Yes. Because uh -huh. I'm, I'm wearing the UPS shirt. Right, right. And, and it fits you better right. than it fits me. It fits me perfectly. And everywhere I've gone today, and I've worn this shirt all day long. Right. <laughs> Big laughs everywhere. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a, it's a laugh-getter. You walk through a door wearing a UPS shirt. <laughs> and it's Man, great. It's... People laugh. And, and it, you know, you, uh, you, I'm going to give you the hat, and I'm going to give you the uh, the jacket, and you'll have the shorts. You will have the full regalia. Because you really, if you're, if you're going to be the UPS guy for Halloween, which you said... And I'm going to be. You informed me that, uh, that you were going to be the UPS guy when you got out of the car. And so uh, I'm going to give you everything that I have, because I, as much as I enjoyed that coat, <laughs> I don't see myself in that coat. I, I really don't. So uh, you, then you'll be able to wear, I think, the overcoat with the shorts. That's got to be a winner. We'll yeah. make, uh, we'll make yeah. the outfit. Yeah, I brought the, the shorts home last night, and my wife said she had something in her sewing box that she could get a hook. What happened with the shorts was, I went and put them on yesterday. They fit fine, but they they came without a the little thing you grab onto to, mm -hmm. to zip up the pants. The tab. Yeah, you're risking serious injury trying to zip your fly. Right, you pull like a, there's something about Mary. Right. So Frida's going to zip uh, fix the zipper for me. And I and I'm also wearing the uh, the official UPS belt that you were. Oh, you on. wore that one. Yeah. Okay, very Sharp. good. Yeah, there it is. So when it when it comes time for Halloween, I'll be your your handy UPS man. So now I've got to come up with something else, and I'll uh, I'll let you know when I figure it out. But uh, you know, because Halloween is close. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, today I got to tell you, I, w I had went to the dentist for my uh, semi annual cleaning. Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you. Oh, thanks a lot. You know, nothing needs to be done in there. Right. They gave me the lecture about flossing again, and the lady gave me the same routine about are you flossing the right way. But on the way out of the dentist's office, the UPS truck was pulling up. Right. <laughs> and I didn't have a jacket on. This was about 60 degrees. I was walking out, and the guy gives me one of these, like a little salute, like, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> From one UPS brother to another. Are they allowed to wear jeans, though, like you're wearing? Are they no, I don't, I don't think so. But I don't he, think so. He did not question it. There you go. Oh, you're part of the family. Right. Like maybe you're coming home from work, you know, and you threw your jeans on after you were at the UPS locker. <laughs> ah, the girls are on the way. Excellent. Ah, I hope they find the building. Girls are on the way for your show, Buzz. And I think, yeah. you know, I said yesterday about the UPS guys, about how they love their work. <laughs> I think that, that's, that's very true. Basically, just the guy I saw today, just... Happy go lucky, a guy who appeared to be happy driving a truck, mm -hmm. delivering packages. You know, right. you, you don't have to answer to the man all day. You kind of set your own schedule. It. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I think it's a good job. It really is. It's always been, in my opinion, one of the best kind of truck driving jobs you can get. As far as if you're, you know, drive. And I'm probably UPS drivers. We're not truck drivers. Or UPS men. Okay. And I was thinking about it because I, I'm truly blessed to be doing this job here today. Because mm -hmm. this is what, what I do. It's what I wanted to do since I was like six or seven years old. Mm -hmm. That's all I ever wanted to do is be a disc jockey. I had a bedroom radio station. I had no goal in life except doing this. Right. So I'm very blessed to come in every day and have fun with you guys. I love this. But 
I really think that if I wasn't doing this... <laughs> you work for UPS. I think a UPS job might have been like my avenue to the top. Until you wrecked their third truck. Well, all right. And then, yeah. then you know, okay. then you might, But they have, man they have management positions. No, though. Mike, I'd have to be on the road. You have to be dancing to your own... You know what? You might be doing what your brother's doing. The long haul no, trucker. No, absolutely no. not. No, no, that, that's a dirty life. You know, those UPS drivers are good drivers. I don't mind. I hate getting behind a truck when I'm in traffic, and a lot of times they're heavy and pokey and slow. Right. Those UPS guys, they've got a deadline to meet, so they move right along, and they, they do. never slow me down. I have a good relationship with uh, the UPS guys that mm -hmm. come to my house well, every I'm, day with I'm, new packages. I'm telling you, that this shirt, though. Opened so many doors for me today. With people just smiling and happy to see you. You know, there was a combination of the people who thought that I was really a UPS guy bringing them something. Right, right. And then, like, the people that I know, like, when I came to the radio station today, I thought Colette was absolutely going to bust the gut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you're not the UPS man. I know, I know. Oh, that's just great. Uh, today is Buzz's 55th birthday. It is the 7th of October, and our phone number is 1 877 365 3636. Buzz, would you share with everybody the card that I... I would love to. I'm glad you asked. I gave you. I, I have to tell you also, I got a great card from Rob A. It shows uh, two women wearing long dresses sitting on the beach wearing hats, but the inscription is what makes the card. It simply says, as they woke up on the beach the morning after the birthday celebration, wondering what they had done the night before, they took comfort in the fact that they still had their hats on. There you go. Oh, reference reference to my is. very own beach vacation. That's there right. You go. And uh, the card from Don, this is just great. It, on the front, flowers, and it says, My prayers are with you, Buzz. Skippy. <laughs> and then you open it up. Inside, the inscription says, Trust in God's goodness. There and, you go. And don't be weak, even when you notice you are starting to leak. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's written, uh, hoping you survive until the end of the ratings period. Yours in Christ, Don. Yeah. <laughs> great card. Thank you. Thank that's you. the kind of buddy I am. That, that is very nice. Because I yeah. my prayer every night before I go to sleep. <laughs> Please let Buzz make it through the ratings period. That's my prayer, too. <laughs> and, of course, uh, my gift to Buzz, and now I guess the standard gift that I'm giving everybody on their birthday. Yes. Yeah. I gave Buzz oh. one of those Palm Pilot things that I gave to Mike. Way too generous. And, Buzz, you'll mm -hmm. notice that I do not have a gift or a card for you today. Shocker. And, uh, of course, I'll do the same. Same thing I did last year. I'll get you by the end of the week. Okay. I'll With that gift that you like so much. Oh, yeah. Time. Hey, okay. you can't be green. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. You when you care enough to send the very best. <laughs> and, of course, by the end of today's show, I will have made you a very good custom card. Not I... like these uh, computer store-bought things. I'll make you something with these two hands right here. I always look forward to that. No, mine was made with the Hallmark program on our home computer. Man. Yeah, but I'm talking Lovely. about the trenches. Oh. I'm going to take my hams, Don. I'm going to take these Tahitian war clubs. I'm going to... Craft. I am going to craft are you gonna, a are you card. Gonna, you're going to take one of our publicity pictures and put your picture inside it. Like you you know do. my secret. <laughs> you know my secret. If I can just find a good body to put my head on this year, it's always a win. I'll be very excited. <laughs> so listen, today we have Buzz's birthday girls. They're late, so we'll move on with the show. Then we have the producers of the uh, the big uh, butt balloon naked girl video thing coming on. Excellent. Good, good. To discuss uh, everything that's happening. Also, uh, during the show, today. We will be getting updates from Buzz about the Red Sox, which will help with Mike's mood. That's right. Game yeah, starts well, a little after four-hour time. Help or hurt, any way you look at it. I, I, I basically am in a foul, foul mood. Have been, mm. have been since the fourth inning of last night's game. Yeah, when uh, The stopper for the Boston Red Sox, the man that all the dreams of New England uh, are on his back. The man who, ha who got more press than any member of the Red Sox probably in the last ten years. The guy that is the savior of the Boston Red Sox who got injured in the fourth inning. Ooh. Answering the player, the prayers of the Cleveland Indians, and of course sending the Red Sox down to what everyone knew as soon as that happened would be the eventual defeat, and it was just extraordinarily difficult. It's like yeah, I, uh, JB, who is also he's with the Sports Junkies, he's also a uh, Red Sox fan. <laughs> he he just one line email this morning, one line email. They do it every year. <laughs> that was it. That was, the only, you know what? that was the only email. Because I'm basking in the glow of the Dennis Murphy victory and everything. Yes, I yes. Hope you know. I didn't call you last night. You know, and I turned it on right when that uh, guy from Cleveland hit the hit home the run. run when he tied it, which yeah. is really like winning it. I mean, that really was like when they won it. And uh, yeah, if you'd called uh, at that moment, uh, it would have been uh, it would have been ugly. I, I wouldn't I would not have been responsible for what I would have said because I was just I, I want to apologize to my brother-in-law Lou. Lou
Lou and I were in there watching the game last night, and Lou was just, I mean, I was in the most negative Red Sox frame of mind. Hey, imagine the great mood you're going to be in Saturday night when you watch game three with Dennis Murphy. Which, in all probability, I mean, you know, I, I don't want to say that because, I, I mean, I, I still want to no, they're gonna try to put today. up the, the, good fa the good front and the good face. They're going to lose today. All the fans today, the Red Sox fans are just like, you know, it's over. It's, yeah. you know, Pedro's out. It's over. I mean, they, that was the guy they needed if they had any chance at all. And what it will shape up to be, if they do sweep, will be on Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> Not only having well, done, I told Don this, I told Don this, I said, this week is just S. It's just a big <laughs> pile of S for me. It couldn't, this week could not possibly suck enough for me. I'm sorry to hear And now that. I'm going to be sitting there, with, you know, after feeding with Dennis Murphy at my dinner table, after, you know, leading him to my house blindfolded, <laughs> after, you know, having him shake hands with, or shake hands with my wife, oh. I'll be able to sit on the couch shake with him. Shake hand. Shake hand. Mm -hmm. Shake stump. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll be sitting on the couch with him watching it. You know what? If they go down, now I want to watch the game. I sure. will want to watch the no, game. No, you'll watch the game even if they lose today. You'll if, watch if the game. If it's two Saturday to nothing, night. no. You know, and if it, I'll tell you what. If the game looks like it's going south, then then I'll then I'll just maybe figure out something else no. to do with with Dennis. Let me pick. Let me pick your boot up. Okay. Because I love it when we get a good booking on this show. Mm -hmm. You know that, uh, of course, Leah's going to call today to talk about her Letterman frame. Right, right. Right. And tomorrow on the show, we're having uh, Jody and Sissy right. from Family Affair. Mm -hmm. All grown up. They're coming in here. Right. But next Tuesday, yes, we've got a booking that we've been waiting for a long time. Really? Ladies and gentlemen, the Don and Mike Show, proud to welcome next Tuesday... Mr. Chris Poison Ivy Burke. Ah, yes. Chris Burke. Poison That's Ivy. Right. The, uh, what was the TV show? The Corky Show. <laughs> there was, there's another. Uh, Life, goes, Life, on. goes, Life on. goes on. Life goes on. Life goes on, yes. Chris Burke has been booked as a guest on this show next week. Excellent. That's that great. will be very exciting. For those of you who live for the awkward moments that this show yes. can supply, I would urge you to be listening <laughs> next Tuesday. Wonderful. You will want to have a tape in for that. Very good. Oh, and about Leah Remini. Uh, she owes me a hundred bucks. She yes. does. David Letterman kissed her hand, and she yes, looked he did. beautiful on the show. Mm -hmm. She sure did. Last night on Letterman, she was a little nervous. Yeah, very nervous, but it was uh, it worked to her advantage, I think. He likes that because he gets that paternal thing happening where he grabs her hand and he's like trying to calm her down. And you know, she said something like, "Didn't she say something like, I adore you?" Yes. And, and wow. that, you know, I mean, you play to the ego. Man, he's a showbiz guy. You right. play to the ego. And you know, she took our advice when 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 she came out. He walked. As predicted, halfway behind the chairs to greet her, right. she hugged him and then whispered in his ear. Sure. Something like, you know, I love your show. I'm Absolutely. a big fan of your show. Very, very nice. Just yeah. as you advised. Yeah, so a good, a good appearance for Leah last night. Mm -hmm. Things were a little dicey for me last night, incidentally, when I got home. You know, I was wondering about that. You, uh, you did not leave the show on the best of terms with your wife when you left here, and I was wondering how you diffused the Leah Remini situation when you got home. Well, listen, there's no diffusing it. Uh, we had a discussion when I got home last night. <laughs> you know, apparently, I'm told, and, and I really can't tell these things because, you know, I'm here doing this show, and I can't tell what I'm saying. Right. But I'm told that... You, you know, know what you're saying? I'll fill in the blanks for you because then you won't get in trouble. For it. You're here providing... <laughs> providing for the family. I, I, I was told that yesterday on the show that when Leah did not call in immediately after her appearance, mm -hmm. that I was like a high school boy who had been uh, shut out of a date. Well, you know something I can say, really? I was here, and uh, you were. Yeah. yeah. You were absolutely. Well, that was pointed out to yeah. me last night by my wife. And, True. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of you don't get the whole show, and we ran way long yesterday. And right at the very end of the show, like at 7.30, Leah finally called, and at, at the moment that Leah called, I was on the phone with my wife, <laughs> where my wife was yelling at me, you know, saying, why are you living in this fantasy world with your girlfriend, Leah Remini? And then I said to Freedom, well, listen, hold on, let me just put you on the phone with Leah. And then I just had my wife scream at me, no, just end the show and come home now. And she hung up. She hung it's up. time to come home. And my son was yelling at 7.35, it's time to come home. That's right, absolutely. Then, then we talked to Leah, and then I, I got home, and... Uh, I had to have a uh, heart to heart with my wonderful wife. Well, what do you do? I mean, did you explain the facts to her that? Uh, well, I said, listen. You know, I mean, this is you know that you. One thing first and foremost, you are a realist. You know the situation with Leah is just what it is. I mean, no matter what you think, it's just what it is. And if right. you don't know, I'm going to tell you what it is. I got a chance. <laughs> no, no, I know. Of course, no, no, no. no. <laughs> of course, of course I know. Listen, of course I know that. <laughs> right. She would never have anything to do with a schmuck like me. I've got a wonderful wife who I've been married to for 180 years, mm -hmm. and my my point in all. Of this, the Frida was. Listen, you know, if there's one thing about me, I'm a celebrity effer, and I don't mean that literally, but I mean 
when we get like a TV star or a movie star, if I can glob onto them, same with sports guys, right. you know, that's probably one of my <laughs> one of my worst qualities is that I glom on to the point when they event to, to where they eventually just have to shrug their shoulders to like to get me off, <laughs> leave me I mean, alone. You know, not get me off, but you no. know, to, to get me off. Be a match to your head like a tick. <laughs> yes, that's that's what it is, really. Yeah, so, so she said that uh, she doesn't like hearing me fawn over Aaliyah, and then I said, well, you know, that's why the radio has a knob. You know, I would take the female aspect of things out of the equation with, with Leah Remini, and we, I mean, we, we have never had a sitcom star that has been this nice to us okay. with a current hit show on any major network that right. has been this consistently nice to us. If this was a guy or a woman, I mean, this is just terrific. And that was the point I made to Frida last night. I said, if Kevin had treated us as nice as Leah treats us. We'd be sucking up to him, I too. Said, I'd be the same way about him. Mm -hmm. She said, really? Would you have a picture of him up? <laughs> well, as you can see, I have a picture of Leah in front of me. Yes, you do. And I said, uh, uh, maybe not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe not, but then she was fine. She was just battling a cold. Hey, the girls yeah. are here. She'd had a bad day. Oh, hi, girls. Hey, Buzz, there's your girls. Buzz's girls. Hey, are they new girls? girls? Are they new girls? Yeah, new girls. Brand new girls, Mike. New this fall. Buzzy, hold on. Let, you know what? Let's take a couple of calls, and then we'll do a break, and then we'll be able to get into the whole Buzz birthday experience. Excellent. Okay. But but I guess the bottom line, things at home are cool. Very right. good. Good. We watched Leah last night. Yeah. We watched it together. Mm -hmm. You know, free to school with Leah. Good. There's, there's no problem. Good. Let me just say, in case my wife is listening right now also, because there's just a tiny little fallout on my house about that also. Honey, I love you. I want to grow old with you. And that's just the bottom line. I just oh. want to say that. And well. I want to say that. Just in general, without the Leah Remini situation, I rarely say it on the show, but I say it today. We had a lovely lunch, we had a nice chat, and I want to say that to her. So there you have it. Wanted to say that. Oh. I just want to say my wife's at work. Like, what the you know, hell you know, is that, that is, reaction? That reaction is, mm, you know, thanks for thanks for trumping me. I, I'm that, not trying to here trump I am, you. There I am. I, own I, I spent ten minutes trying to suck up to my wife. I know. And in thirty seconds, right? Boom! King me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fine. You know, you win the checkers match of life. I have no. That was <laughs> not in the least. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I was wondering why. You know, when I hear the, mm, <laughs> I know. I know that something's wrong. And I I just, uh, you know, I wanted to uh, to say that I was not. I was, you know, what I should have done. I should have picked it. When you talk about your wife, and you know, when you talk about situations, it, it just makes me think about me. Of course, yeah, right. it's like when I talk me, about, like, personally. When I talk about me, it makes me. It makes you think about you. Me. And so I just wanted to uh, say that I wasn't. Sure. Uh, I wasn't trying trying to trump like that. But to a certain extent, I think that the Leah thing. It just gets it gets into the seams a little bit. You know what I mean? We do fawn, both of us. Yeah. Fact, we we get a little like, competitive when she's on the and line. As a matter of fact, we, we both got to watch that. I know. We got to watch that when she's I on know. the show today. I know. To try to keep cool. Right. To stay cool. Good luck. I'm gonna stay be cool. real laid back. Well, <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna let you. I'm know not. What? I'm gonna let you have her today. <laughs> really? Thank you. Yeah, I really am. Watch me. Watch me. You know um. something? You, give me a signal if if I push a little bit too much. You know? <laughs> give me just a little. In fact, just look at me and go, hmm. <laughs> okay. <There you> go. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Absolutely, I will. So, I thought everything was, was defused. Hey, Charlie, yeah. tell the girls to wait one break, okay? I will. Because they were late. Thank you, Charles. Okay. I, I, everything with Leo last night, you know, was really, it was no big deal. Mm -hmm. My wife likes calling the show and, and doing that on the show. Right. It was fine. We got home. We had a talk. And things were fine. We had a good night. Woke up this morning. She had to go to the dentist also. We got back home. And I said, well, I'm off to work. And she said... You're wearing that UPS shirt, aren't you? And I said, yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Mm -hmm. She said, it reminds you of your fantasy wife, doesn't it? <laughs> and I said, oh, no, 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 listen, listen. No. I'm not wearing a UPS shirt because of Leah Remini. Right. Please. I'm really not. No. Really, I'm not. You're not fantasizing about really, me, and Kevin James. Really? No, I can honestly. Say that's one fantasy I don't have. <laughs> is being Kevin James. You know, for a fat guy though, he's he's not an ugly fat guy. You know what I mean? He's not the real super turbo <laughs> ugly fat guy. She stands alone on that one. No, well, I don't think so. There have been. <laughs> I would put many many fat guys on TV in front. I would say he's better looking than Farley. I would say he. You think he's better looking than Drew yeah. Carey? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We got a call one day from a listener who wanted to find out more about how to get in touch with Kevin James because she thought he was cute. He doesn't yeah. have that, 
You know, Chris Farley, as funny as he was, and Tommy Boy. No, he was an ugly guy. Chris Farley was, was an scary, ugly guy. Scary, fat, ugly. Yeah. You know, I mean, he was in that scary like. Especially towards that the was, end. He was in staring ugly. I think uh, I think David uh, Kevin James would actually walk into a restaurant and you wouldn't stare with your mouth agape. Right, here's one for you. This is not too gay. Now we're doing who would you do with guys, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> Kevin James, right? Or Tom Arnold. Kevin James in a minute. Yeah, but not on personality. No, no, just in a just minute. on the way that they look. Oh, looks. Cleaner, yeah. cleaner look. I'm just trying to think of fat guys. But you, you, also, you got to think of Tom, Ar Tom Arnold at his biggest and fattest, right? Uh, in the, when they were the same weight class, because Tom Arnold no, no, lost of, weight. Think of uh, True Lies Tom Arnold. Yeah, definitely Kevin James. Really? Yeah, Kevin James yeah. has that... He, I mean, he just doesn't look like a guy. He looks like a guy that washes regularly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I guess you're right. He really does. I guess you're right. I don't know. I think maybe I guess the only fat guy who's... I'm trying to think of fat guys now is what I'm trying Drew to do. Drew Carey, maybe. You know, over mm -hmm. Kevin James. I don't know. You know, and here's a slam dunk. If we were gay. Kevin James or Louis Anderson. Oh, oh Kevin oh. James. Yeah, Kevin. Kevin James, please. <laughs> there was not even a chance to think about yeah. that. There you go. <laughs> right. And have you, have you seen Louis Anderson on the new Family Feud? I saw Louis Anderson. Remember when I went out to that fight? Yeah. I walked in back of Louis Anderson, and he is not. You, you can also be fat, and you can have at least some color in your skin. Uh -oh. He did not look healthy at all. Uh -oh. Louis Anderson, what's he got to be? He's got to be like late 30s, maybe early 40s. I hate right. Louis Anderson. And I Louis Anderson, God, I hate him. He looked really, as he was walking, and I was in back of him, so I didn't see the front until I walked right down, right in front of him at the, uh, at the end when we were walking out of the uh, arena where the uh, De La Hoya fight was. Right. Louis Anderson had a, the gait. Of, of just an elderly man, sure. and, he, and he looked sure. he looked elderly. It was weird. Yeah, the way it was Gary. <laughs> hello, hey. hello, Don and Mike show. Hello there. Happy birthday, Buzz. Hey, thank you. Hey, listen, what's the deal with Buzz? I mean, he must have found the fountain of youth. I've, I've seen Buzz. He doesn't look a day over forty. There's no gray hairs. No, you know, I think that Buzz may be doing a, a Dutch Reagan with his hair. I, I would think so too. Do you have like, a little shoe polish? Do you have any gray in your beard? Uh, no, it's blonde. Actually, you if you use, look closely, it's do you blonde. use that just for men's stuff? No, I don't. I don't use any color no. anywhere at any time. You I don't do any of that? No, nothing. Buzz does, does look damn good for double nickel. Damn good for fifty-five. Oh. Yeah, it's, I mean, I've seen him. I met him personally. He comes into some of the shops there in Fairfax, and boy, the guy's hip. You know, he's he's funny. I mean, I'm not sure whether you've taken a look at the uh, mirror with our hairs I, lately, but uh, <laughs> you and I are get, taking oh, a little oh, ride on the gray train. Oh, I know. I'm much more Michael McDonald than you are. Yeah, but up here, up in the hair, but yeah. But you know what I noticed today? Because I trimmed my beard, mm -hmm. the beard is starting to. I'm actually. I think I'm actually more gray in my beard now than I was before. Wow. Hello, Donna Mike. Look at Buzz. Fifty-five. Hey, there God. he is. Fifteen <laughs> years That's older incredible. than us, and he yeah. looks so much better than we do. Yeah, it's, that, it's that clean living. Hello, <laughs> Donna and Mike. Show. <laughs> right. Hello, Don. Yes, Aaron. Hey. Yeah, I'm just calling to tell you why the UPS men are always so happy. Think about it for a minute. While all the husbands are at work, the UPS men are there with their wives making the deliveries. Yeah, I don't think the UPS guys have time to do that. I really don't. I mean, if they're if they're going to be on their schedule, I don't think they have time to uh, you know go in and. You know, I'll say this when I've seen UPS guys at work, including the UPS guy that comes to our house. Mm -hmm. When he stops the car, man, he runs to yep. the back of the truck to pick up the box. He runs up to the front door and then he runs away. Do you well, think I am a UPS man? I'm telling. That's why they run at some stops, so they got more time at others. Do you bang other women? No, no, no. no. But I didn't meet my wife at work here at UPS. Well, see, she was a UPS worker. No, she wasn't. I am. If you if you run like from uh, door to door, do you do that really so you can kind of make your own schedule? Can yeah, you, can yeah. You, like, we finish, you, we're done. So you can get yourself, like, say, an eight-hour delivery day. You can finish it in, what, six hours? Uh, on a good day, yeah. See, that's... Or sometimes you take extra work, you have ten hours, you can finish it in eight. And, and you get paid for the ten. Oh, that's great. So you only have, like, on, a, on any given day, you have, like, maybe 40 boxes you have to deliver? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, my route has about 300 boxes and about 110 stops. All right, I was, I was using wow. just 40 because I don't know anything about it. But oh, let's okay. say you got, so you have 100 boxes. If you go super fast <laughs> and you got all those hundred boxes delivered like by noon, you're done. You could kick back the rest of the day. Yeah. But what is your record? That doesn't happen. What is your record for an eight-hour delivery day? Oh, I don't know about eight hours. At Christmas time, um, I've run over 300 stops a day. Wow. Oh, Jesus Christ. But, but what's the earliest you were ever uh, to get out and get paid for an eight-hour day? Uh, probably 2:30. But you That's love it though, right? Building. You love the freedom. Uh, it has its ups and downs. Like so that you got to work out in the weather. People are, you know, nice sunny days like today. People are like, oh, you're so lucky to be working outside. But you don't hear them say that when it's pouring down rain or the snow's flying. But generally, do you enjoy your job? Yeah, pretty 
pretty much. Yeah, Pay's okay. good, benefits are good, and you get to meet a lot of people. All right. That's yeah. cool. And yeah. that would be the only downside for me, I think, would be having to meet people. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not a big face-to-face meeting people type guy. You'd have to meet hundreds of different people every yeah. day. Yeah. I would run. Be, I'd be one of those guys that would just leave it and ring the bell and run. <laughs> <laughs> and if it needed a signature, that would just mean that package did not get delivered. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Ron and Mike show. Oh, yeah. yeah. How you doing today, guys? Hey, buddy. Hey, this is Ray in Fort Myers. I saw Leah last night and this morning. Really? What, are you her boyfriend? No, she was uh, on Rosie this morning. Oh, how'd she do on that show? She did damn good. She really did good. And they ended up trying to go over and crash The View, that program with Barbara Walters. Oh, really? But they wouldn't let her on. Rosie, just, Rosie said, oh, I've got my new butt here. They just... They hooked up great. The New York thing. It's the New York connection. Oh, yeah. And yeah, don't, they, don't discount the fact that Rosie wanted to get into Leah's pants. Oh, absolutely. Because, <laughs> you know, Rosie, Rosie's uh, allegedly is a big lesbian. Sure. sure. You know, the first thing Rosie did on the show was did a breast examination for cancer. <laughs> on Leah? No, on herself. <laughs> on herself. Oh. So she's feeling herself up. Like right on TV? On TV. Did she oh. show those big pancakes? <laughs> no, she had some kind of a thing over her. Oh. She did a uh, oh self God. exam. Oh but Leah God. was just marvelous, and she was great last night, too. Yeah, yeah, she was great. Thank you, my friend. Sure. <laughs> Thank She's you. got another boyfriend. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, her new boyfriend is, is Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello, Don and Mike show. Don. Yeah. Mike. Yes. Buzz, happy birthday. Thank you. Rave, hello. Hi. Oh, come on. Holder, Scully. <laughs> come on, what can we do for you? Well, I know you're not looking for any backup, but for what it's worth, I wanted to say something to Frida that um, as much as it might have bothered her, that uh, call from the green room was one of the most interesting segments I've ever heard anywhere. Hmm. I mean, it was, uh, I watch Letterman every day. I listen to you guys every day, and I watch King of Queens, too. And I never, th- I never thought I'd uh, get a peek at what, what's going on in there. Cool, all right. Yeah, yeah, thank I you agree. so much for that. I agree. Thank you. Can I ask you a question, Don? Nope, that's it. I'm sorry. You know, whenever somebody makes a call and it's a good call, then they say, can I ask you a question? That is a classic setup. So, hey, now we've educated the uh, dinks in the audience. Hello, Don and Mike show. (laughs) Hey, guys, I want to let you know that not only the story that Mike Scripps tells, your UPS driver tells as well. Uh, I'm sorry. I I couldn't understand what his cell phone. Something about UPS. He said, (laughs) hello, Don and Mike show. Don! Yes! Mike! Hi! Happy birthday, Buzz! Thanks. You know what I did today? What? This is the guys at the Sea Ray place. You might have heard from Danielle a little while back. Well, we had Michelle Pfeiffer and Harrison Ford out on Lake Champlain today. Really? Where's that? You mean up, upstate New York? In Vermont, yeah. In Vermont, right, okay. What were they doing up there? Well, they're filming a movie, What Lies Beneath. Yeah. And they were shooting a sailboat scene. And we had to shuttle uh, Harrison Ford out there and had him hang out with us for a little while. Did they have to pretend it was summertime? Because it must have been freezing up there. Well, you know what? It was about 35, 40 degrees, and the wind was blowing. You know, there is no greater actor than Harrison Ford, and I will be the first to go see his new movie, Random Hearts. Mm -hmm. A big fan of his. But is there a bigger is there a bigger bore on the face of the earth? You ever seen Harrison Ford interviews? Horrible interviews. Oh my God! What a boring man he is. Supposed to be boring. He's a boring kisser. We we've, we've heard. But, right? uh, one of the tabloid stories said that that he that the leading lady said that he's one of the worst kissers in Hollywood. Well, he doesn't slip on the tongue. I don't think he does. <laughs> I think he actually is good. <laughs> <laughs> what a bore he is. I mean, great actor. Don't get me wrong. Love all of his films. But he's Christ, not all that outgoing anyway. You might as well have interdu- interviewed a, a piece of wood on the Today Show when I saw Katie Kerr trying to get something out of him yesterday. <laughs> he's uh, boring. He's supposed to be nice, too. He's supposed to be a real nice guy. No uh, no attitude or anything like so that. So what was he like? Well, down to earth, just kind of sat in his ways, talked a little on the radio. Um, chatted with us a bit, spilled coffee on the boat. We got some stains if you want them. <laughs> oh, Harrison Ford stains? Sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> want, the, want those stains, yeah. <laughs> and I've got the seat that Michelle sat in. Oh, now oh. that you know we'd be interested in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Give that the old sniff test. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she gave the order for us to throttle down. <laughs> oh, did Yeah, I bet oh. she did. <laughs> yep, yeah. She wanted to go right back into the house when that was over. You ever seen Michelle Pfeiffer in a, in a snowmobile suit? No. Well, you know, they shot a nice face. 
Well, you didn't like her body. Yeah, you couldn't see a damn thing. Oh. Oh, oh all right, because a snowmobile suit. All right, right. okay. The, the, the scene was they were sailing in the fall, in the autumn with the, you know, the foliage behind them. <laughs> this guy is speaking pure New England right now. Yeah. <laughs> you got to figure it out, you know. It's like, you ever see it in a sailor suit? Throttle down. <laughs> yes, sir. I wanted to get there in a hurry. <laughs> all right, thank you, my friend. Hey, you guys have a great day, and happy birthday, Buzz. Thanks. All right, thank you. Hello, Buzz. <laughs> Hello there, Don and Mike Show. <laughs> Yes, I'd like to inquire as to what Buzz's beauty regimen is. Excellent idea. Buzz? Actually, ever since I burned my eyes with that chemical, a nothing. Oh, really? Look at that. Soap and water. It's all natural. I had a little uh, Elvis Presley's ritual. <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit. Every morning. <laughs> with a slight variation. You don't do anything to preserve your youth? Not anymore. No. I love Don and Mike. Not after Buzz's maladies. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? Oops. Hold on. Let me try this one. Line six. Hello, Don and Mike show. Don, yeah, got a question for you. Yeah, Bobby. Last night on when you were watching Leah on uh, Letterman, yeah, when it got to the point where he said, uh, "Who are you married?" and she said, "No, I have a boyfriend." Uh huh. Did Don Geronimo come across on your TV when she said the name? Did what? <laughs> Instead of Antonio, did she on your TV? Did it say Don Geronimo is her voice? An interesting question. He's saying did you oh, hear no. voices is what he's no, asking. No, I did. I, I would like to point out again, for the record, Your Honor, that I was watching that show in bed ah. with my wife, which means I was watching it with my with my fists clenched, right, and my <laughs> arms crossed like this, rolled up in a little ball, just heart, feeling heart beating, <laughs> feeling all oogie, <laughs> yeah, you heart know, beating a mile a minute, <laughs> trying to act like it was no big deal. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, guys. Hi. I thought that that's the funny thing that what that caller just had. I thought it was really interesting the way she did that little kind of dissing her boyfriend thing, you know, that kind of, yeah, I got a boyfriend, you know, like, you kind of like the way you act when someone's flirting with you and you don't really want to admit you have a boyfriend. Well, she's girlfriend. on with David you know, Letterman. Right. Of course she's got to play it that way. We, we told her yesterday that Letterman hits on every good-looking girl on that show, mm -hmm. and there is no doubt, especially when uh, she was telling her boring story about Shea Stadium that she's told to us, right. and she stopped and she looked at Mr. Letterman, she says, what? What are you doing? And she caught him because he says, I'm just looking at you in the monitor. Oh, she looked, she looked good. She looked good. That's, Didn't he say something like, we look beautiful together yeah. or something like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. we look beautiful yeah. together. That's his line. And then at the very end, you know that Letterman, he's predictable, that he son of a bitch. <laughs> he reached out, he held her hand, and then right as they were going to break. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, when I saw that, I immediately said, oh, 100 bucks for Don. That's 100 bucks for me. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and I'll take that money from Leah. Sure. Yeah. She can afford it. Jesus, she's a TV star. Maybe she'll give it to you on a gift certificate. Oh, my. <laughs> now you're being bad. I'm sorry. Hello, Don and Mike show. <laughs> Big Don. Hundred dollars worth of hugs. <laughs> Hello. Hello. You, you take that. <laughs> oh, no, I wouldn't. No, no you can't. <laughs> Not after last night, I wouldn't. That's right, you wouldn't. Hello. Don and Mike. And I, I, I don't think she'd offer me a hundred dollars worth of hugs. No. No, she'll, she'll pay you the cash. That would be an awful lot of hug, though, for a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Or that, one long one hundred dollar hug. That would be a hug that maybe, <laughs> you know, had some grope in it. Yeah. Hello. Donna Mike. Yeah. A nice hey. reassuring squeeze. Hello. <laughs> Donna Mike. Yes, sir. What's going on? Hi. Um, hey, I don't know if, uh, I know you guys saw the Letterman show, but, um, and I'm one of your other callers called in and mentioned the, um, Rosie O'Donnell show, but Leah was also on the, uh, CBS This Morning show. Well, yeah. that's what they do when they go to New York, you know, they make the, the circuit. With two you know, well, I think we made a mistake by not getting her to say our names on one of those shows. And I mean, I watched intently, hoping that she would bring your names up, and, uh, she didn't, but she was looking mighty fine. Mm. All right, thank you, my friend. Last, no problem. Last call right here. Hello, Don and Mike show. Don and Mike. Hey, buddy. Happy, happy birthday, bud. Thanks. Hey, uh, Don, Mike, yeah, did yeah. you guys feel like um, coaches watching her there? Like you're watching your player, like, oh, that was good. Oh, that was good. good. Yeah, very I much I felt like so. I was watching the team that I root for, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I saw it in a whole different manner, but it was cool to watch. You know, yeah. um, you know, I, I thought that was very, very interesting. If you listened to the whole show yesterday and you heard her when she called us in the first break, when she was so nervous, and then when, if you heard her right before the show went on, then to imagine that after she called us, she went right out and did that shot. Right. You know, you really got a sense of what it really was like to be a guest on the David Letterman show. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And her total different voice, her Letterman voice, I suppose, and when she's talking to us, it's just really weird to see it like that. Oh, I didn't notice a different voice. Well, how she talks more, you know, she's not so talking like this, you know. She's yeah, she was nervous. She was, I mean, she was trying to play yeah. the, the right thing, and yeah. I thought she did a good job. A really wonderful job. You know what Rob pointed out to me? Right. And I turned it off after she was on. Mm -hmm. 
Rob said, you know, Letterman really must have had a boner for her. Mm -hmm. Because when they had, uh, after Lily Tomlin, mm -hmm. they had some singer who we never heard of come out and sing a song. Right. Leo was back on the couch sitting next to Letterman when the lady sang her song. You know, we're going to have to ask him. We're going to ask. He asked her to stay, right? Oh, my yeah, God. And then when the girl was done with her song, when she came to sit down for her 30 seconds, Leo was also sitting there. Oh, she sat there. It's like they, they, they never do that on Letterman. They ask, never ask anybody to stay. Only in very, very special cases. Or no, we will no, have to, we'll have to ask Leah if she actually talked today. I mean, if he really engaged her in conversation during the commercial. Yeah, break. I take it back. Leah, Leah was on after Lily Tomlin. Right. So Leah just, like, stayed out there for the whole second half of the show. Yeah, she you brought him else? for it because at one point Leah said, I'm done already. And he says, no, you can stay. Ah. So, oh. I mean, oh. so she asked, but it looked almost awkward because he never has anyone panel. Right. Cool. Well, he, he's sitting there, and they come back and said, hey, we'll be right back with, you know, just the, like the 30-second break back. And he reaches out and taps her on the hand. And, is like, and she looks at him like, oh, and he gives the little short hug. So he was working. Uh, you think he did her last night? <laughs> no, 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 no. But, I mean, he you think she woke up this morning with David Letterman in bed? <laughs> See, that you were wondering what the delay was between the end of the taping and the time that she called. Yeah, right. I think Absolutely, we know. Absolutely, Bob. Right. I think we know now. There was an hour there. Oh, you know, <laughs> she now has a relationship with him. Thank you, my friend. You bet. Bye-bye. <laughs> Imagine that. Letterman show's over. He goes, ah, uh, Leah, my oh my. Uh, how about an after-show cocktail? Oh, Dave, I'd love to. <laughs> you certainly are fetching. My oh my. Hey, Dave, do you do this with all your guests? No, Leah, but you and I have, my oh my, a kinetic energy. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, what are you doing? Oh, 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 <laughs> Take me. <laughs> okay, let's oh, do a dear. break. We do have Buzz's birthday, girls, coming right up. But first, your toe tapping touch tones. All right. Time to clear these lines and take a caller 100 to try to win secret sound number five, which is now worth 600 bucks. It's a toughie. If you think you know what it is, give you a chance to win the money right now. If you're the 100th call at 1 365 3636. This is. Is the Don and Mike Show. It's almost 4 o'clock. If you live in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, where you are hearing this show on the stadium, WKQV. Yo, Mike and Don Doss. It's like I feel because just backwards won this read. I don't think I pay. Hey. You almost ready, Buzz? I'm almost ready. I got a card from the girls. Oh, wow. That's, Man, that's pretty. What, this is, I, I can't see it. What, what from, is it? From the lovely Shiloh. Can you see your picture there? You might want to turn your lights up in your studio. All right, Buzz. Okay. You know how you normally turn them down, so then you're going to have to turn them up. I'm trying, trying to set the mood, you know? Oh, now I can see. Oh, there you go. Wow. oh she's a, naked on the beach. That's the lovely Shiloh, and Beautiful. here's the lovely Jenna. Oh, oh look at that. There you go. Shiloh. Two naked oh. girls. Oh. Buzz's birthday party's coming right up. Let's get a caller 100. Please, hello, Don and Mike show. All right. Hi, who, who is this, please? This is Aubrey. Hi, Aubrey. Hello. Hi. Hi. Buzz is... Buzz is saying hello to his girls. Why don't you go ahead and get situated over there? Okay. Just All relax, right. Buzz, and enjoy the show. I'll Aubrey, try. Aubrey, where are you from? Hi. Uh, Greenville, South Carolina. Listening on good old WPEK, right? Oh, yeah. Caller number 100, that is you, and you have won a copy of Young Frankenstein, the funniest comedy of all time, on sale now at video stores everywhere. All right. But wait, still more. You've qualified for tomorrow's weekly giveaway. Tomorrow on Friday's episode, we're giving away a trip for two to see WWE. WWF No Mercy in Cleveland, yeah. courtesy of WWF and Cox Cable Top Event. If you win, the trip includes round-trip air, hotel, and tickets to WWF No Mercy. Call Cox Cable Top Event at 378-8888 to order WWF No Mercy Sunday, October 17. Fantastic. Please make sure you're listening to tomorrow's episode, okay? Oh, will do. Because that's when we have our weekly giveaway. Okay, now, the pressing business, Aubrey. Yes. And Aubrey was a name, <laughs> a very ordinary girl. It's very difficult for me to concentrate during the Secret Sound game right now. Do you remember that song by Brad? Yes, I do. Aubrey? Yeah. Uh, I don't think I've heard that one. And Aubrey was... Her name. <laughs> okay, here's your chance to win 600 bucks. Have you heard Secret Sound number five yet, sir? I think I have, if somebody hasn't gotten it. All right, hold on. I'll give you a free listen. This one's on the house. 
Because it's Buzz, Buzz's birthday. You know, it says Buzz is 55 and his secret sound number 5. Mm -hmm. I'll give you another free listen. Okay. okay. There you go. There's two free listens. Now, next one, you're on the clock. After you hear the sound, we'll give you 15 seconds. Please do not answer until Mike sings like Hank Hill. Are you ready? Yes. Good luck, Aubrey. Caller, <laughs> name this noise. Right, there's the noise, an everyday noise. That's heard in most homes. Aubrey, if you can identify that sound, you will win 600 bucks, Mike. Oh! Aubrey, Aubrey, what is it? Is it the opening of a briefcase? Oh. Aubrey, that uh, that is only about the oh, we're sorry. One hundredth time someone has guessed that. That's why we say every guess is, is a clue, clue for, for you. you. <laughs> but that time it wasn't because somebody guessed that already. Uh, my radio station's cut you off the last couple of days. All right for that uh, baseball, right? Yeah, meaningless baseball. Right. Yes. Thank you, thank you, Aubrey. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> thank you, Aubrey. <laughs> Hold the line, please. <laughs> thank you. You know, this is really my favorite time of year because this is when Mike goes into his annual Red Sox depression. <laughs> I know, yes. I'm so glad I can make you happy. Hello. Yes, yes, we were. John and Mike show. Good year for him. Hello. John and Mike. John and Mike. John and Mike. This is my man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a nice twist. <laughs> Got in there. My guy comes strong. Yes, absolutely. A protege. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hi, this is Sam Huff. <laughs> hey, everybody's calling right now. Hello, Sam. Hey, how you guys doing today? Doing great, Sammy. Do you know that we're going down to uh, Phoenix, Arizona to see the Redskins and the Cardinals next week? Really? Yeah, you know, I, I'm going to be staying sunny, and uh, we're going to be staying with our good friend uh, George Liddy uh, next next week out in Arizona. <laughs> huh, really? <laughs> That's right. That's we're, incredible. We're all, we're all great buds, you know, us and the Liddies and everybody else. We love each other very much. I didn't know you were friends with Gigi. Yeah, do you know that we, we uh, he he wanted me to help him when I, he was the Watergate guy, you know, because he was a, a plumber, and he said, says, Sam, you know, you're the greatest linebacker in the history of the NFL. You, you're my plunger. <laughs> and you know what happened to Mr. Liddy when he got caught with that Watergate stuff? Yeah, it's really unfortunate. He came up in the short end. He sure did. He sure did. <laughs> Pretty good. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Hello. I'd like to talk to Buzz. I'm yeah. here, sir. He's hey, here. how you doing, man? I just want to tell you the man because I just whacked off. I smell him. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, my God. All right. We Jesus didn't need Christ. We didn't need that. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Jesus. Happy birthday to I still love you, Mike. Happy birthday, Mike. I still love you, Mike. Happy it's your guy, Mike. <laughs> Following the lead of my guy. <laughs> oh, man. Buzz, everybody's calling for you today. Man. I'd like to point out of that ongoing competition we have. Yes, I am aware. Yeah, absolutely. But I'll give your guys a prop. Thank also. you. Sure. He was good, too. They were both good today. <laughs> Hello, Bill. Yes, don't Hi. Mike. Hi, you're on the air. Hi there. Regarding your interview yesterday of Leah Remini before she went on the Letterman show, mm -hmm. you were asking her what she was going to wear, and at one point you said, are you going to wear a bra? And if you noticed, her response was, oh, I have to wear one. So my theory is that she's at least a C cup. Uh, you obviously mm -hmm. are a bad listener who did not listen to the whole show yesterday. Bad listener. Sorry, I couldn't. You were preempted because of baseball. Well, yesterday we did ask Leah her bra size. Got and, the information. And, and, the, uh, and the answer was? 34B. Oh. Well, As predicted by me. How much me. my dumb theory? As predicted by me. Thank you. Like any time. Toll free at 1-877-365-3636. That's 1-877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. Hey, you guys had shirts on when you came in here. There's something happened to them, on. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Cole. You just put the shirts back on. You see that sign? No shirt. No shoes, no ties. Oh. All right. Learn it. Know it. Live it. Personally responsible for all of CBS's success, Don and Mike. And now, listen, I do want to talk to all you balloon fetish lovers out there. Yes. And we do have to call Leah Remini in just a moment. Right. Right. The hotline just rang. Mm -hmm. and there's somebody that everybody's been waiting to hear from on the show. Yes. Hello. Hey, dude. Hey, hey everybody. It's, it's brother. My real-life brother, 
Jim, Earth Dog Jim. Where you been, man? Uh, Minnesota, Oklahoma, Texas. So you finally called. Yeah. I told everybody on the show what you said when I, I talked to you. I, was it last week or the weekend before? And I said, man, you got to call us and tell us about what's happening to mom and dad. And my, oh. my brother said, oh, mom, people don't want to hear that, oh, mom. Right. Wrong. Totally wrong, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> wrong. Everybody's very interested in what's going on with you. Absolutely, Jim. We want to know what's, uh, you know, the deal. You're, you, know, you were oh, sir, I, I, taking your mom to court last time we what, showed. What's your deal? What's, what's your fee? What's your fee? <laughs> I sent them that restraining order, you know, through certified mail. Yeah. And they haven't picked it up yet. Well, now, hold on. Now you're getting ahead of yourself because I haven't talked about, like, court when, when you went to court. Oh. Oh, Yeah. Wait, no, let me let me just re resend this for you very quickly. That my mother, who of course is out of her freaking mind, and my father is out of his freaking mind. Uh, they hired a private investigator to follow my brother around, right? And, and then my, mainly mainly to follow my girlfriend around. And, and then they they wrapped it into a scene on the street where my mother slapped my brother's girlfriend, and then after that, my brother said, y you know, leave me alone. Stop, stop hassling me. Mm -hmm. And he eventually had to go to court. Mm -hmm. So it was a week ago Monday right. that my mom and dad were, were served with papers to show up in court about the slap, right? Uh, yeah. For a restraining order. Mm -hmm. Okay, because he says, listen, the, the, my mom slapped his girlfriend. Wants her away, wants to keep her away. Like 100 yards away or something right. like that. And when I last spoke to my brother on the radio, he was very nervous about my mom and dad coming back to Illinois, Wisconsin, for the for this court appearance. Uh -huh. And as a matter of fact, I talked to him the night before. And I told him, don't worry about it. I said, either way you win. You know, if they come up, if they decide to make a scene in front of the judge, because especially my mom and dad are certifiably crazy. There's no mm -hmm. doubt about it. You're going to get the restraining order. And if they don't show up, then you get the restraining order. Yep. Okay, so here's, here's the upshot. Tell everybody what happened. Well, I went to court and they never showed. Uh -huh. They sent the judge a letter. <laughs> Okay, now, what did the letter say? Oh, it just, it basically told them that they're living on, that they're poor and living on a retirement income and that they want the charges, uh, the accusation and charges dropped. Okay. Um, hold on, I, I just got to, since I know the story here, I got to tell you some of the stuff from this letter. Right. They wrote to this judge, now, this is how crazy my parents are. Mm -hmm. They got a document that tells them to go to court because somebody wants a restraining order. To they wrote a letter to the judge and they said that... My brother, what did they say that you did in third grade? What? what oh, did... they they just they mentioned stuff that I did when I was in third grade, fifth grade, eighth grade. <laughs> you know. So they went back on any any time you... that I was clinically diagnosed as a pathological liar and a what is it? Gen, what did I say? That other word, genesis or something? No, not a genesis. What is? No, it's not, it, it basically means that I'm a woman hater. A misogynist. Oh. A misogynist. Right. All right. And my brother, when he was reading this to me, reading this letter that they sent to the to the uh, to the judge, I said, "Well, listen, I know for sure you're not a misogynist. That's a man who hates women, right? And you certainly are not, you know, kooky." <laughs> I, I said. Uh, my mom and dad got some balls. Did they write a letter to the judge trying to get like, their their charges dropped? Yeah. Meanwhile, they're it's kind of a harassing letter. Oh, and they're, they're bashing me is what they were doing. And yeah. what they're writing not is, really what you do when you want to get charges dropped. And, and what they're writing is you know a hundred percent untrue. I said to Jimmy, I said, well, didn't you tell the judge that you've never been? Clinically diagnosed as being I've a pathological been, liar. I've never been to a shrink for anything. Right. Well, okay. So, didn't you mention that to the judge? No, the judge didn't say anything. He just read the letter. Oh, that's horrible. You know, he didn't say anything. I, I had to go down to the clerk's office to look at my file. To uh... did he read it out loud or did no, he? No, just... no, no. He just read it to me. Oh, himself. good, good. Uh, I thought he had. I was picturing like a judge sitting up at the big judge stand reading that out to the entire courtroom. Oh, if he would have, I would have been highly pissed. See, but that, even that's unfair, that a judge would read a letter. Now, now listen, he, you know, I'm looking at it from the judge's standpoint. The, the judge it, acted like if they were there, he wouldn't have get granted me the restraining order. And that's I'm, how he acted. I told my brother, well, look at it from the judge's standpoint. You got my brother coming in looking a little bit like Kurt Cobain. Mm -hmm. No, I okay. don't. My hair's short. Okay. I cut listen. my beard off. So, oh, really? so you, were completely, uh, you were completely clean shaven? Wow. No, I got a, a, a goatee. All right, well, well, that's a little evil. you got to take those off when you're in the courtroom. I'm on your side, Jimmy. I'm just yeah. Yeah, I'm my, playing, hair, my hair's short. I'm playing devil's advocate. The, the judge says, well, look, here's a 75-year-old woman. She's written me a letter saying that this guy is clinically diagnosed with all these problems. <laughs> you know, but what's wrong about it is that the judge 
never asks my brother, right? And anything about anything uh, about this stuff that my parents wrote. So he re he reads the letter. Are you able to present any kind of case at all? No, no. He just did. He oh my God! Turned to me and he said, "Well, he just asked me about who Rachel was." I said, "My daughter," and you know, and and, and he says, "Well, why don't you want him to see your daughter?" I says, "Cause they're whacked. I just I don't want him around my daughter." <laughs> Is that you what know? you said to him? Well, not in them words, but... <laughs> you didn't say they're whacked. Yeah. You know. Right. Well, what did you say exactly? Do you remember? No, I don't. I okay. was nervous. Okay. I'm kind of in front of the judge. I'm nervous. Okay, I got you. So... <laughs> <laughs> and then he turned to me and he says, well, since they didn't show up, I guess I have to grant this restraining order. Oh, it's my brother. You know, that, okay, good. Victory. Right. You know? You got what you wanted out of it. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, that's what you wanted. I mean, what? didn't you really want this basically just to, you know, really keep keep the distance? Yeah. Yeah, so you got what you wanted. That's great. Yeah. For so, two years. And in two years, I'm going back to get it again. Okay, so now the judge granted this, and you got a restraining order against our parents. Yep. Now, now I don't know the answer to this. Were, were you just saying that you sent it down to them certified yeah, mail? I, I could have gone to the sheriff again and paid another hundred bucks to the sheriff to to do it, but uh, clerk says, well, you can do, uh, you can do it by certified mail where they have to sign for it. Yeah. So I said, well, hell yeah, I'll do it that way. Mm -hmm. And any any feedback or? Uh, they, I, I just they... went down to the, my post office box and I didn't get the green card back yet. And the lady says, well. Uh, you can allow six days round trip to get there and back, plus they have 15 days to pick it up. And the first registered letter I sent them, they picked it up right away. Mm -hmm. You know, so now I'm getting the idea that they're not going to pick it up. So anyway, just to bring everybody up to speed on this, so the continuing saga of my brother and I and my mm -hmm. parents. Mm -hmm. You know, my parents, I swear to God, they're out of their minds. I mean, right. it's one thing to have a problem with, with a child and, sure. and, and to be mad at them and stuff. But, like, they write a letter to this judge. And this, we're talking about the second kid we're talking about yeah. here, too. You know, yeah. this has happened. You've I gone told, through this in a different judge way. That my brother divorced, divorced him five or six years ago. Well, I think my brother did the same thing. Thank God they didn't write a letter about me. You know, I mean, I can imagine what they say about me. And see, the thing that's a pisser is that my brother doesn't know that the judge has read this letter mm -hmm. that shows all these crazy lies my parents said about him right. until after he's done. Uh -oh. See, that's, that's weird. He that's not right. Me, he didn't even tell me that they sent him a letter. But it really doesn't matter if he, uh, you know, if he filed a restraining order. If he, yeah. if he granted that, then that's cool. Oh, hey, they also said in the letter that I've got a long history of criminal behavior and, and all kinds of stuff like that. And that's, just, you know what that is? That's speeding tickets. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll tell you one other thing they said about it. They went, as, they went as far back as, when did you light that trash can on fire in the school? <laughs> <laughs> that was fourth grade. All right. They wrote that in the letter to the judge. Of course. Mm -hmm. That my brother lit a trash can on fire in the fourth freaking grade at Melwood Elementary School. Why, I say it's, it's giving your whole rap, your, your whole rap sheet, huh? <laughs> my God. Yeah. How nutty is that? That is weird. That's, out, that's outrageous. But the I good news is God. you got your distance now. I think that's terrific. Well, it's not really legal until they accept it. Oh, but they have to. See, this is what well, I'm you know what, with well, my if brother. I, if I get the whole packet back, then I have to pay another $100 down to the sheriff in, in Florida mm -hmm. and have them serve it. And they will make sure it's served. They'll keep going back. Back until they catch him at home. Well, then that'll be the best hundred bucks you ever spent. Yeah, it will. But you got it now. You got to do though what I told you. Now that you you know, it's like he's been in a pissing contest with my parents for the last year, mm -hmm. and now the pissing contest has ended. Now you've just got to stop it. You, oh, I am. You've got to stop going and talking to mom's sister. Oh, I have you, talked to. No, no, you got to stop. And I, you know, and that's another thing they wrote. You know, I uh, when we tried to have them serve before. They, uh, you know, I just asked mom's sister, well, have they left for Florida yet? And she goes, oh, yes, they did. They left yesterday. So that restraining order was no good. I had to go into court then and get, get a whole brand new one. And then we ended up at this place with an Elvis impersonator who was Italian. <laughs> and you've done a million shows today, too. What? Haven't you? You've done a million TV shows today. I did. Oh, oh, I went to Rosie. Yeah, did she hit on you? No. She was so sweet to us, and then, uh... I was I was supposed to go on the view, but uh, they they didn't want to have me because I was uh, doing Rosie first. No, no. Uh, somebody told us yeah. that because we all see the Rosie show. It's on when we're on. Right. Somebody told us that you and Rosie did like a bit where you were going to go over and crash the view. We were. Oh, and did you? They said no. Oh, oh really? really? Yeah. Oh. oh, that sucks. So there's a little drama going on. Oh, really? Your cool. revenue showed up a little controversy. Oh, you're going to be like on Entertainment Tonight tonight, then. I don't know. Yeah, no, they eat that stuff up. Yeah, you'll be on that show. What'd you say? Eddie. 
Who's, who's that in the background? That's Jackie and my sister, Nicole. Uh, oh. Your support group. My support group, yeah. Who, who did very well for you. You know what? We, we didn't know that your friend Jackie was an actress. We looked her up on the web. That's right. And we found she's going to be in a Woody Allen movie. That's you, right. You sound tired. Are you wiped out today? Oh, uh, we're so tired. Oh, my God. We're so tired. We were walking. Did you just hear what I just said? Walking. <laughs> we were walking, and I had my high heel boots on because I think I'm so kick-ass. <laughs> and after, like, ten blocks, we were all like, okay. We got to go. So we tried to get a cab, and this cab asked us, he, go, he asked us where we were going. It was like 30 blocks. Was it 30 blocks? Yeah. But he just he just shook his head, no, he, like in disgust, and he, went, and he just drove off. He turned down. Oh. It wasn't down. far enough. But here, here, as we're walking down the street, we see him again. <laughs> we see him again. <laughs> and the look of fear on his face. And I walk, all three of us start charging towards this, the car. My sister's looking for a pen, and, and she's writing down his cab number, and I go, Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, you know, you, you shouldn't do that. And I'm trying to think of something really witty to say, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going, this is what I did, okay. I go, I go you don't have to be so rude. And what did that he do? That was my big thing. What that was it? Did he but do I was anything? ready to go off, but that's what came out of my mouth. <laughs> With my big nail pointing at him, right? So listen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I go, we're going to call your boss. <laughs> <laughs> is, your, is your whirlwind media tour over now? Yes. Yeah. Oh, and thanks to my sister now, I have to go to over to all my children tomorrow. Why? Why? First of all, because we had... Right, and then my sister shimmied her, herself on the Rosie O'Donnell show today. Oh, how did she do that? Because she was going on and on about how much she wanted to meet her, and, and you know, I didn't think it was going to happen, that she was actually going to meet her. Yeah. So in my pre-interview, I was telling her my sister flew in, you know, she wants to meet Rosie, she loves Rosie. So the producer had set it up where Rosie said hello to her in the audience. Cool. But instead of just saying hello to her, she called her down on the set. Oh, no. So oh. my sister comes on, and she gets the biggest laugh with some inside information that she shouldn't have said on the air. Oh, what did she say? She gets the biggest laugh, like totally, what is the word? What is the word when you overdo somebody? Blows them away. No. Yeah, she showed me up. What did, what did she say? What, what was she said, they said, what, Rosie said, what, is, what was the thing that you're being replaced with? And my sister said, and she goes, oh, did you hear what they replaced my sister with today on The View? And, and Rosie goes, what? And Nicole says, what? Yeast yeast, uh, a segment on yeast infection. <laughs> oh, big laugh for Rosie. <laughs> you know what? Hey, way to go. Your sister's funny. That is good. That's very good. Well, she didn't just come up with that. That was true. But That's nobody cool. else knew that. I know. So, so were you mad at your sister for that? No. No, you love your sister. No. I love my sister. Of course you do. Yeah, yeah. so what? I did smack her, though, on the air. Why just wear her? her hair. Why? <laughs> oh, I thought it would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> Nobody laughed. They were like, <laughs> Let me ask you seriously. <laughs> oh, man. That's a funny sister. It's a real talent. <laughs> outside. Outside. This lady. She's, she's drinking. I don't know. It sounds like it. My sister. Should I ask her? Yeah. Outside. This woman comes up to us. She goes, oh, my God. I just saw Rosie's show. You guys are so funny. She goes, Rosie, really, you're cute, but you. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, you can see an action. Oh, my. Oh, meow, meow, meow. <laughs> but you were saying. Yeah, I want to ask you two questions. What? All right, the first question I want to ask you. Have you been drinking today? <laughs> <laughs> really, have you had some champagne or something? <laughs> Yeah, okay. Mike, Mike I, finds that funny for some reason. I do, I, I do, do, I do. I, do. I, do. Hey, I, do. Do. I do. I knew she's bombed. <laughs> no, right. I wish. All right. You know what it is, Don? What? what? You yes. know what it is? What? Is that I am so exhausted. I'm so, I'm loopy. You're exhausted right. after 30 minutes. I haven't had a drink. Mm -hmm. All right, then here's my other question. Seriously. Yeah. When Letterman hit on you, what was the movie put? After the show, when Letterman tried to hit on you, what was the movie used? He didn't. Really? No, really? How, how about conversation in, in commercial break? Yeah. Was there any? Well, here's the thing. He said, I'm very funny. He goes, I really am a fan of you. You're very, very funny on the show. Really, you have a great thing going. Then he asked me if I made a lot of money. Then he asked me where I lived. Really? Oh. Wow. Wow. 
give me your street address? No. No? Yeah. No. Okay. No, no, you know, it wasn't you know, like that. No, he, you know what? He's very business. He's not, uh... He's not shady, at least not to me. Hey, I, and I want to tell you something, too. I thought you kind of sold Angelo out a little bit last night. How? <laughs> well, the, you know, Letterman says, obviously, he's like hitting on you. Do you have a boyfriend? And you went, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. You went, Don. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rewind. Yeah, I'm, okay. Okay. If you were really watching, he said, are you married? Do you have a husband? And I went, no. And then he went, do, do you have a boyfriend? Then I went, waited for him to... You know, are you going to do another thing? Like, do you have a part? Like, waiting for something because he kept okay. going on. Yeah, I'm, and I said, no, no, yeah, I have a, bo no, I have a boyfriend. I'm just standing up for Angelo. That's but like you see what I'm saying? I thought that Letterman was hitting on you. Yeah, and yeah, there was definitely, the, you know, he had interest. He had big time. No, it interest. did seem, it did seem like I paused and I was being weird. Mm -hmm. But that's because he he said husband, and then you got to, you know, and he was doing that. So I was just waiting for him to. I think that's good for future guests because I think that just showed you, you know, I know you were nervous when you went on there, but I, when you did that, it indicated to him, you know, hey, I'm the guest, I'm here, you, you might be looking at the monitor, stop it, it's I didn't rude. I know what he was doing, that was the thing, I was worried that they were doing like, shut up, like you got 10 seconds, get rid of this one over here, mm -hmm. I didn't know what they were doing. No, I didn't know what he was doing. No, it, your and parents. And then later on, they told me, "Oh, we're so glad you did that. That's so funny." Oh, it was good. No, you, you gave him a little bit. That's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. No, you done good. Thank you. You done good. That was a four star appearance, Leah. Thank you. No yeah, we're very, we're, I mean, you really did a great job. We were rooting for you. Oh, and we were. We were so nervous watching it last. I night. really was nervous. It was weird. I mean, it really? was absolutely weird. Yeah, I was nervous before you came out. It was cool. Really? Yeah. yeah. And my sister noticed that my 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 fist was clenched, like I was like holding on to something. Didn't I didn't you? notice that. You didn't I notice did. it looked weird. Mm -hmm. I noticed. Did you it looked see like it? I had a, like a, an issue. I just thought you were nervous. That's all. I was a little nervous. Yeah, that's I was a little nervous. That's what I noticed. I know, <laughs> noticed everything. Isn't it funny that throughout all my nervousness, I still kept my word with everything I said I was going to do. I was going to call. I called. You did. Yes. And you know what? Yeah, we're going to give you a yes, prop for that. And you know, we had no doubt. Extraordinary. <laughs> no, you are. You are extraordinary. You are extraordinary. And as a matter of fact, we uh, we already had people call the show today and said that they thought it was real interesting to hear you backstage yesterday. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, well, that's a glimpse that none of us ever get to see what it's like backstage at the Letterman Show. Yeah, everybody's calling the show. They dig that. that uh, and then you, know. you talked to the big guy in charge. Yeah, right. right. His producer. That was fun, too. Jackie, what's his name? Rob Burnett. Rob, Rob Burnett. Burnett. He's the executive producer. Yeah, he's a big guy. Did he hit on you? No. No? <laughs> no. They no. give you food before that? No, they had like cookies and, and um, fruit in the dressing room and water. Oh, that what? sucks for big time television. Would they have a Rosie, like all junk food? No, <laughs> Rosie had fruit and water and coffee. and she, it, Actually, she had very nice dressing rooms. Letterman was very tiny. How cold was it in Letterman's studio? We hear it's freezing. Freezing, freezing in there, right? Beyond yeah. freezing. Really, that cold? Beyond freezing. So when you talk to Rosie O'Donnell during the commercials, what do you talk about with her? She was saying at, at the commercial, she's like, oh my, she was, we're going to go over there. This is going to be so funny. And oh my God, you know, like she was all excited. Cool. Oh, well, good. She was very, very cool. Oh, mm. well, good. Yeah, she's, and even she, at the commercial break, she was like, you know what? She goes, you're so great. This was such a great interview. Thank you so much. I'm a big fan of yours. You know, really sweet. Oh, so your nice. trip to New York has been very successful. So, well, I don't know. Now this view thing has got me buzzing. It's Oh, the view? Well, screw uh, the view. Well, no, I thought it would be funny if we went over there. Because well, no. then it would be like, okay, nobody's uh, holding a grudge here, but being that they said no. All right, now, l l let me, walk me through this again. Uh, you you were booked on both shows, right? Right. And then when you went on Rosie O'Donnell first, the people from The View said if she went on Rosie O'Donnell, forget it, we don't want her. Right. Oh, well, that does scrap them. And so you were going to do a walk-on where you were going to, you and Rosie were going to walk onto the set of The yeah. View? Yeah, and uh, and they like the producers or whoever said no, we we don't want to do that. Right. So it never it was never a situation where somebody stopped you at a door. This was just something that uh, behind the scenes got uh, the kibosh. Or did you do this live on the air with Rosie? I mean, yeah. did you, get, you guys walked across the street. Oh no, we didn't do that. Oh. But after we were done, she said, "Well, let's call over there and make sure it's okay." Oh, okay. And they called and they said no. She said, uh, I think it was, uh, I don't know who it was, well, but they said no. Listen, who wants to be interviewed by that cow Barbara Walters anyway? <laughs> I mean, don't you think that's weird, though? Yeah, it is weird. It's and, weird. And you know what I found out? That this happens more often than not. Oh, sure. It's a big pissing contest. But I never thought that. It would seem to me both of you guys going on that show for a walk-on where that would actually, you know, fit in that that show very well. But I thought, who cares? Well, oh, they no, care. that's, that's huge in the, in the like, talk show business. Well, you know now you can't go on Leno now next week. 
But you people know. do it all the time. Yeah, but it really is competitive when it comes to booking guests. It really, really is. But, Mike, is. how many times do you see somebody go on a junket, right? Yeah. You see an actor go on every single show. You're like, all right, listen, I heard the same joke on blah, blah, blah last night. Well, you, you do. Know? You see that, but you see somebody, like, do a morning show, then they'll do, a, like, a Rosie show, and they'll do a Letterman show, but you don't see him. You being... don't see him go on Regis and then go right on Rosie O'Donnell, yeah. then go right on The View. See, if you're in the same well, little competitive girl, zone. Well, well, somebody just did uh, Letterman, now she's doing Craig Kilborn. You know, she's doing too late night. I mean, when are you going on Craig Kilborn? Huh? When are you going on Craig Kilborn? Did that. When did you do that? Weeks ago. Oh, all right. Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh. You, you I, didn't tell us that. I forget sometimes we're talking to such a major star. And, oh, listen, listen, Leah, no, no. Don't, Leah, don't forget that Craig Kilborn and Letterman, that's the same company. Mm -hmm. So they, they have no problem with you going on both shows. Uh, I just don't think this stuff exists. Oh, it does. And I guarantee tomorrow you're going to be in the, in, the, in the entertainment headlines. Oh, how much good. You want, how much you, I'll bet you another $100. You're on Entertainment Tonight tonight. No. And tomorrow you're on page six of the New York Post. How All much right, you want to bet? Double or nothing, buddy. All right, I'll, I'll go another 100 bucks with you. Double or nothing. Because you know what? They love it. Entertainment Tonight. No, double or nothing. Uh, no, I, that's what I you said. You said 100 bucks. Okay, I'm meaning 100 bucks, double or nothing, $200. Okay, good. Mike, you heard this. I did. I'm a witness, and we've got it on tape. Because they're going to get that guy with the big Ken hair going, well, uh... Oh, wait a minute, Don. So you're saying I'm going to be on what? Entertainment Tonight, about your feud with The View. Okay. And you'll be in page six of the New York Post. No. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> All right. Double or nothing, and I want my $200 when I what? see you. And no, and when I, I, when I see you, I want my $200. Cash. I want my 200 I want cash. Okay. And I would expect cash from you also. Okay. <laughs> All right. Got well, a deal. Well, then, uh, I guess I'll talk to you tomorrow okay, when, you, when you call in to give me my $200. Okay. okay. Well, I'm leaving tomorrow. I'm going home. Well, then call us when you get home, or call okay. us... Uh, Bye, 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 bye. So with your wife? Well, no, everything's fine with my wife. Okay, good. She just had a stressed out day yesterday. Okay. You know. but, you, but you were nice to her when you went home? Oh, of course. She's my sweetie. Okay, good. There's never a problem. There. All right, Mike, you're okay? Yeah, everything's fine. I said a nice okay. thing. Yeah, Rob's Rob's okay. Everybody's fine. Yeah, okay. no. Everybody's Charlie, what? Oh. Oops. Well, screw Charlie. <laughs> He's not married. <laughs> I know. I knew you did that. <laughs> Sorry, Charlie. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> with a wife, <laughs> one step forward. <laughs> Charlie, not so fast. Yeah. <laughs> I love it when she messes with Charlie. That is my that is my favorite thing that you do. <laughs> <laughs> so listen. Dave. Listen, if we could uh, change the topic just for one brief moment. What? Have you and Kevin discussed at all when Mike and I come on the show next week what we're going to be doing? I haven't seen Kevin. You know, he was. I saw him on the Regis show. Yeah. Yeah, he did good. Ooh, boy, that Regis Philbin. Boy, he, whoa, 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 whoa. He, he interviews like a paper bag. Oh, that's really? not going to be. We're just curious. That's not going to be a problem, is it? What? Us coming on the show? No. It's like, you know, the company's already made all the arrangements. No. So we're already, you know, booked for our, our flight. Hey, you know, yeah. speaking of, hold on. You know what, Leah? What? This is, you know, you should be guest hosting with Regis. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? You should be guest hosting. No. Yeah, that, that uh, Kathy C. is off filming a movie. I watched it today, and I had Regis' wife on. How come you should tell your agent no, to book... No. No, tell your agent to book you as the co-host. No. I, I, honestly, I don't, I don't know what celebrities I find more interesting than myself. <laughs> no. I'm sorry, you do, you do good in the opening uh, part of that show where they just <laughs> say crap for 15 minutes. Right. Right. You'd be good at that. Thank you, sweetie. But, you know, don't take my advice. Not I a job for me, though. All right, two, 200 bucks. I was only right about Letterman kissing your hand yesterday. That's true. You were really right oh, on that. Oh, listen, last thing. What? When you came out and you hugged him, Yeah. when you whispered in his ear... No, what? he whispered in my oh, ear. Oh, what did he say? He said, I'm a big fan. Thank you so much for being here. Oh. And then I went, oh, I nodded my head. I went, oh, please, you, you, thank you for... And I just... Oh. That's very good. It was perfect. Yeah. That was like my thing. I wanted him to whisper something in my ear just so I looked at You got the whisper in the ear, and you also got the hand And kiss. I got the hand So, you're, I mean, you're sad. It was fine. Yeah, it was a good time. So what did your mom think? My mom thought I looked so pretty. She said I looked like a little... <laughs> you were such a little sweetheart. God, that was just so not like you, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> what did Letterman's breath smell like? Was it good, bad, indifferent? No, he was good. It was really? Good. Mm. Did, did he have a smell? Although I was kind of half out of myself, you know what I mean? Like, not really... Tough to remember that, but if it had been real bad, like a cigar rotten. I think I would have remembered it. Cigar breath doesn't bother me. Right. It's just bad breath that bothers me. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. Have you talked to Kevin? I can't believe that Shirley McLean didn't call back knowing that I called her. <laughs> Shirley McLean never calls us back. We always have to call and, her. And nothing from, uh, what's his face? Snipes? No. Nope. Snipes, yeah. Or Van Patten. No, they, they no. haven't called. 
So we'll bring our book next week when we come out there. Okay, good. And you know what? You've got to give us the number of, like, uh, some of those freaks from Say by the Bell. Okay. Because we want to call Zach. Okay. <laughs> I'll try to get it for you. Zach's okay. the number one on our well, he's married now, you know. That's okay. That won't slow us <laughs> down. A man can still fantasize. All right. <laughs> well, let, me, let me just play your intro one more time here. Our next guest is uh, one of the stars of the popular television program, The King of Queens. Okay. Uh, Monday nights at 8 right here on CBS. Here is the lovely Leah Remini, ladies and gentlemen. Walking out on the old David Letterman show. <laughs> what a moment. What a moment. Your mama must be proud. You guys are funny. Right, well, when are you going back home? Tomorrow. Okay. Well, you can call us tomorrow, and, you know, if, if we're not here, call us Monday. All right, darling. Okay. Your ratings will be great. Okay. Okay. And Thank we'll, you, sweetheart. Have a safe welcome. trip. We will see you next Friday. Okay, good. I look forward to it. Okay, see ya. But I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Bye, sweetie. Bye. 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 Okay. Okay. <laughs> hey, I thought we did good. Yeah, pretty good. We did very well. So, you know, speaking, you know, that we weren't like teenage boys. Right, right. So we did okay. Absolutely. Like we didn't better. appear too clingy. No, not much. One more thing. <laughs> one more thing. And one more thing. <laughs> well, she had a lot of interesting stuff to say, like about Letterman and stuff. Of course. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> All right. Well, there's Leah Remy, major star, friend of ours. And I do, I do believe that she will be on entertainment. But that's the kind of crap that, that you know they get. That guy with the big can hair. I had a show business feud oh, happening today. Sure. And ever the pragmatist. I just want Charlie, if you're listening, Charlie, tidy up this thing with uh, with the King of Queens. Just reminding and 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 doing. These are. Actors. I want to just say that, for, you know, first and foremost, these are actors. I don't want to be sitting there at, at the stage door when we get out to L.A. <laughs> and walk in and going, uh, we have you on no list. <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right, yeah. guys? Hey, listen, listen, you know what I want to say? I want to say, I want rewind time right now. Okay. And I want you to erase having said that. Okay, very good. You know what that is? That's just like, you know what told me what you did last night? When I called? When the Red Sox were up. But that was a good thing that no, I no, called no, no. about. When the Red Sox were up, I called his brother-in-law, right. and that's what jinxed it. He, he told oh. me that. Uh, right now, the All fact right. that you've said that, Let me do you that. have an essence. Jinx it, because that is exactly what's going to happen. So I need to rewind it? Yes, Let me do it right now. Rewind it. There, it's been rewound. Thank you. Now, boy, that was a long segment. That was my brother and Leah Remedy. Is that a commercial-free hour? Yeah, it was. And we still have people on the phone that want to talk about their balloon fetishes. Wow. So let's do that, and then we'll be back with more. Good Mike Show. You whiz gang. Looks like the killer gutted the victim, strangled him with his own intestines, and then dumped the body in the river. <laughs> You're right, Scoob. We're dealing with one sick son of a bitch. <clears throat> well, if you are listening to us in Washington, D.C., the time is 543. And do I really have to tell you you're listening to JFK? How about you, Tim? It wasn't bad. <laughs> the Don and Mike Show. All right, now, before uh, we talk to the TV star and before my brother called in, yes, we had last been on the topic of balloon fetishes. That is correct. Right. Oh, uh, let me just set something up for tomorrow's show. Tomorrow from Family Affair, Jody and Sissy, they'll be here. Yes, the uh, the stars that hung out with Brian Keith. We're talking about Mr. French giving them their baths. Poppy, Jody, it's time for your 34th bath of the day. That's tomorrow. Also uh, tomorrow on the show, Greg Gumbel from NFL on NBC or right. CBS, excuse me, will be here to pick the pro so they scab and bleed. Mm -hmm. Chuck Stossel, the love muscle, a brand new low budget Jeopardy, all of that for you on tomorrow. Tomorrow's show. All right. This weekend, Mike has Dennis Murphy spending the night on Saturday night. Yeah. We'll hear about that on Monday with all of the tape. And on Tuesday, on the show, Chris Burke. That's right. From Life Goes On. Corky. All right. Wow. We're going to have Corky on the show. And as I mentioned before, for those of you who live for the awkward moments on this show, yeah. right, I urge you to be listening next Tuesday. Yes. When we have Corky on. Very interesting. And uh, next week, then, we go to Los Angeles to tape the King of Queens. And we will, uh, I think they tape the show on Friday night at 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is uh, bring a tape recorder with us. Good. And we'll tape the whole thing as it's happening and then play that back on Monday. So you'll be uh, wanting to listen to that Monday show uh -huh. behind the scenes of a major sitcom. All right, but let's get back now to the topic about an hour ago with this balloon fetish. Hey, Mike. Hey, guys. Are you a balloon fetish person? Actually, my wife is. 
Really? Yeah. You know the uh, when you grew up as a kid, the little punching balloons that had the long neck and the clown's face. Oh, like yeah. punch, punching bags, right? Sure. Yeah, that, that's one you need to use a little KY gel. Oh. Like that. oh. Yeah, insert it anally and. Oh, okay, oh. all right. Okay, hey, thank you. Yeah, My hey, God, it's a sick world hey, out there. Hey, yes. Hey, a guy waited an hour on hold to say that, isn't that? Pretty incredible. He wanted to uh, get his jollies doing that. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Welcome to Sprockets. Would you like to touch my balloon? Uh, this is this, this is, is not a legitimate this fetish. Is not list. a real balloon fetish lover. Hey, no. I just wanted to say uh, I, I surfed the web a lot. Have to check out a lot of websites. It's a big German German uh, thing, man. So the Germans are into the fetish. Yeah, oh, you know what? I it... found it on like a bunch of a bunch of sites I go through. There, there's links, and then it's not even like naked girls half the time. It's just like girls with balloons. No, on that Buster Balloon site, it said that the whole balloon fetish thing, if you read the small print, originated in Germany. In yeah, Germany, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, an unbelievable amount of sites. You know, like as uh, as I said to you, Don, what haven't the Germans given us? <laughs> and as of I, as I've always said, <laughs> never forget, never forget right. Germany, never forget. Amen. Man, I respect you for that. I love Don and Mike show. That the whole balloon Spanish thing. If you read the small print, from Mike, that is us on the radio. Pretty cool. Hello, Don and Mike. <laughs> the young Buzz Burbank leaves his hut naked. But with his balloon under his arm. For years now, Buzz has been a balloon fetishist. And he is going to the store to stock up on the supplies that will feed his unquenchable erotic fantasy. The young native, native, the young native naked boy <laughs> walking barefoot down the street. Amazing that he can find a convenience store being young and naked. <laughs> is stopped by a woman <laughs> on a camel. She says, would you like a lift? The young naked boy says, yes, and climbs aboard. Little does he know that the woman on the camel also has a bag full of balloons, which he inflates, arousing him. <laughs> and then he says, stop the camel. I have a wild thought. I would like to watch you break those balloons with your buttocks. Because, you see, it's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's a short notice. Yes, right. absolutely. The best we can do. <laughs> That's for sure. Hello, Don and Mike show. Here is our birthday boy, Burbank. Hey. Oh, hey, Buzz. It's, <laughs> it's Bob Barker. Bob Barker yeah. going uh -huh. with a birthday message for you. For Burbank. Yes. <laughs> Burbank. Uh, hi, Bob. Burbank. Thank you, Bob. Here is our birthday boy, a wonderful introduction, Bob. Burbank. <laughs> yes, that's my name. All right. All right. <laughs> well, what else you got for us, Buzz? Uh, Bob? Burbank. I think that'd be about it. Is that all? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that's all right, Bob. <laughs> Goodbye, Buzz. <laughs> I mean, Bob. Hello, <laughs> Don and Mike show. Hello. Hello, hello there. <laughs> How are you, sir? Hello, hello, Don and Mike show. Hi, this is Frank Ahern's, and uh, I have a balloon fetish. <laughs> and I also <laughs> appeared in many gay horns. I don't, I don't doubt any of that, sir. That's just a legend. Oh my goodness! Hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, hey! What's up with the Red Sox, man? Uh, they suck. No, they really do. Yeah. They do. <laughs> They're losing. I didn't have to be informed that you know JB and I, I, I already know you don't need to be informed, but you know I'm a diehard Red Sox fan. You know right. they're losing right now, eleven to one. Dude, it's really bad. You know the only problem is what? that we have no pitching. Yeah, well, I mean, no, we, no, really, there's nothing. We suck. We shouldn't be there. <laughs> but the thing is, I, I, hold on, I would just like to point out that this is the same man who just was it a week ago. When I called them the anal socks, yes. <laughs> when you had your nuclear meltdown, yet now here you are. Yes. Here you are. What are yeah. you doing? I'm doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm pantomiming kicking the dog when he's down. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just pointing yeah, out. Pantomiming, just pounding him at his around, lowest moment. I'm just pointing out ground. that now you're saying yes. already, you are the one saying, yes. we, meaning Red Sox, yes. suck. Yes. 
It's over. Yes. <laughs> and as I wrote, I, I wrote an email to JB today. I said, yes, they suck. Mm -hmm. And we will all be back next year again, going through this same exercise right. again and again and again. And, you know, I can say they suck. I can sit here and say they're the worst team in the world. They've broken my heart once again. But I will be back next year because I get sucked in every single year. And I'll keep are doing count, it. Are you counting them out already? What's that? Are you counting them out? Wait, hold on. Let's see. They lost the first game. I know. They lost their best pitcher. They and they're losing the second game 11 to 1. But see, Mike, it back to are you counting them out of the series? They're no. They're taking it back to Fenway. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're coming back. I'm a little stuff, then. You know, it's not like I'm not going to be watching with Dennis Murphy on my couch. <laughs> Saturday night. Saturday night. Game very three. I, uh, I can't tell you what uh, what that means to me, to be seeing that uh, with uh, with Dennis Murphy. It'll be a, you know what? It'll actually be a nice distraction if they blow it early. Yeah. Then uh, Dennis and I can just sit and talk. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Yeah, I'd like to give a shout out to Pedro Martinez. Shout out, baby. Here they go. Here they go. Back out, baby. Here they go. You know, it's late in the show. I expected this earlier, but uh, we were very busy today, and I, you know, here they are. They're they're descending upon me. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello, God. Hi, Mike. Hi, Dennis. Happy birthday, Don. Well, thank, thank you, Dennis. Good show. Yeah, not bad, huh? <laughs> hey, uh, hey, 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 Don? Yes, Dan. My, my 40th birthday is on the 18th. All right, goodbye. Listen, please. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to sound like Mel with him, but I really want to say to him, what, what, you know, what haven't we done for you? Yes, I know. Come on, keep uh, get, get real mad at him. Just forbid him from coming to my house. No, I don't, <laughs> oh, no. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, you know that the game's at four o'clock on Saturday, right? So if uh, you intend on watching the game with Dennis, you'll have to pick him up early. Oh, it's a four o'clock game. Four o'clock game. That and is... if he loses, oh. I mean, if the Red Sox lose, then uh, Dennis is going to have a really good time at Mike. <laughs> You're right. Uh, uh, Can't lie about that. Oh my. God. You know something? That's the difference between riding in the back seat and riding in the trunk. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> no. Not in my show. Don't hurt him. You know, I was wondering about. Uh, when, hold on a second. I was wondering about when I, when I when I put those blindfolds on him. <laughs> if anybody sees me in my neighborhood, I mean, they're gonna think that I'm you know taking somebody hostage with Dennis with his big blinders on, and then you know, and, uh, it's, it's you could make him lie down in the back seat. I, I will. Yeah, yeah I'll make him lie down. So nobody will see him. Yeah, with blindfold on. Hello. Hi, guys. Hi. Happy birthday, Buzz. Thank you. Hey, uh, talking about fetishes, uh, out here in California, uh, we had a doctor amputate a leg on a healthy man to satisfy a sexual fetish. We talked about that. We did talk about right, that. Yeah, we had that on the Buzz News show. I've right. never heard of such a thing. It's very rare. Only about 200 people in the world have that particular fetish. And really? Buzz is one of those people. Buzz knows, Buzz knows <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Thanks. Buzz is one of the Thank you. every fetish. And Buzz has Good every Buzz. fetish known to mankind. Could you hand me my crutch, please? <laughs> one more call. Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, Don and Mike. How you doing, buddy? Hey, buddy. Hey, I was at a Red Lobster down the street from you guys about an hour ago. Yeah. And uh, in walked these two absolutely beautiful women mm -hmm. wearing like a Playboy bunny t-shirt and stuff. And I was like, oh my God, these got to be Playboy models. Went up to and talked to them. They were the girls that were in for the show. They're right. going in for a little oh, seafood. I bet they smelled like buzz. Oh, they did. They had the seafood flavor on them. Mm -hmm. God, they were absolutely beautiful women. Though. Well, you know, after performing a fantastic sex show, what you have to do is go to Red Lobster. <laughs> well, you already smell like fish. <laughs> <laughs> so why the hell not? There they go. Hey, uh, thank you, buddy. All right, have a nice All time. right, goodbye. Listen, Bye -bye. Uh, clear the lines out now. Mm -hmm. It's time for the secret sound number five. All right. Which is worth six hundred bucks mm -hmm. and if nobody gets it this time we're going to up it a hundred bucks Ooh. this is tough i don't you know, it sounds familiar but it doesn't i don't know what it is i don't know i ask you every day do you want to know what it is i'll tell you if you want to know during the commercials no I, I actually i like the suspense now it's been so long that i think that would spoil it right now secret sound number five is worth six bills you think you know what it is time to call in winners right now caller 100 Lying straight ahead at 1 3636. I need you to call back even though I just hung up on you. Yeah, I have some business to take care of. Huh? When you very greedily were already asking if you could have a naked girl for your birthday. Greed, greed, greed. Because Dennis Mike has a question about your teeth. That's right. Remember what we discussed, Dennis. Uh -huh. I'm standing by that. Yeah. But first, we call our 100. And I won't. I, you, you're caller 100. Yes, yes, yes. Listen, I just want to say, I won't even mention what you just said off the air. Right. Because I don't think you meant that. No, I didn't. You didn't mean that? But I think when you, you said that you. Don't you think that, that I would, would drive him to the dentist? <laughs> when, you, when Mike yeah. said that, he said, listen, I want him to go to the dentist so bad before he comes to my house. I will drive him to the dentist. You know what that was? That was 11 to 1 right there. That was okay, 11 so to 1. Okay, that was the Red Sox. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Let me tell you, though, I think, can't you. You can receive emergency dental care uh, at a walk in place on any 
day, right? So if he hasn't done it, he can do it tomorrow. I don't think there's like, like emergency room. I don't think there's like no, a 24-hour no, no, like dental clinic. Like no. a, a mall dentist or something like that. Well, I'd be curious. I don't know myself. Oh, somebody will call. Mm -hmm. Hello? Hey, yes. Hey, yes, you are the 100th caller, and what is your name? My name's Phyllis. Phyllis, where are you from? I'm from Fairfax County. Phyllis, you are caller number 100. Yes! Phyllis, you have won WWF Raw is War tickets. Huh? Well, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, tickets for wrestling, MCI Center, November 1st. Uh-huh. See over 40 of your favorite wrestlers. Tickets available in the box office or through Ticketmaster. I want to tell you, for some of our listeners, this is a bonanza because we're also going to give you chicken. Oh, boy. That's chicken from Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> you know, in many parts of our listening area, yes. wrestling tickets and chicken. Are the, are really, I mean, consider Christmas come and gone. Yeah. yeah. We might as well be giving away solid gold. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Listen, your Kentucky Fried Chicken is your choice of tender roast, triple crunch, triple crunch zinger, yeah. honey BBQ, or KFC original recipe only at KFC. I think Dennis Murphy has trouble with the triple crunch zinger. <laughs> I think so. Chicken for Phyllis. <laughs> And Phyllis, Phyllis, yes. you win the chicken, you win the wrestling tickets, but more importantly now, you get a shot to go for $600 with Secret Sound number 5. Have you heard it? I have heard it. Do you have an idea? I have an idea. All right, here's a free listen for you. Thank you. Listen very carefully. And that's your free listen. I'll give you another one because we just heard the sound of Buzz wrestling his papers. All right. That's okay, Buzz. Here's a free one for you, another freebie. All right, now, Phyllis. Yes. Play it again. Give you 15 seconds to think it over. Please don't answer until Mike sings like Hank Hill. Phyllis, good luck. Caller, name this noise. It's a toughie. Yeah, I, I am drawing a blank on this one. Let's see what Phyllis says. Ah, ah, ah. A different Phyllis. And now, here's Mike. Oh. Beautiful, Mike. Yes. Oh, thank you. That doesn't happen very often. Thank you. <laughs> Phyllis, for 600 American dollars, what is secret sound number five? I'm guessing that it's an ice cube tray being cracked. Phyllis. Mm. Phyllis. Oh. Yes. Phyllis. Oh. Wasn't that the first oh. sound? Yes. We're sorry. Yes. yes, that was the very first secret sound we used. Uh, Phyllis, in this case, every guess is not a clue for you. <laughs> but we will add $100. Yes. Wow. Meaning the next time we play, secret sound number five is now worth seven bills. 700 American greenbacks. And when it gets up to 1,000, and it will, because it's an impossible sound, stuff. then we'll start giving out clues. Okay, very good. Thank you for the chance. Okay. Phyllis, thank you for listening. <laughs> thank you. Hold hold on just a second. Thank you, Phyllis. Now, we got to make this. Phyllis. You know her first yeah. name. Well, the Phyllis is her last name, right? Her first name is Sith. <laughs> that was good old syphilis. Syphilis. <laughs> uh, before syphilis production. Uh, before we get to our wacky story file, I know we have to do a break because we're running so late. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just want to salute CBS because oh. generally speaking, they are the crappiest network in the world. Right. You know, King of Queens, everybody loves Raymond, mm -hmm. notwithstanding. Right. They suck. But this idea for a TV show... <laughs> Great. And I'm not being facetious. It, it sounds pretty incredible. This is great. CBS wants to make a millionaire out of one person. Okay? But it's not like the dumb Regis Philbin show. Right. It's a show called Survivor. Now, today, producers are, are seeking 16 contestants from across America. The 16 people that they end up with will be flown to Borneo next spring. And they will be marooned for 39 days there on an uninhabited tropical rainforest island. Pretty amazing. Uh -huh. And they will have nothing except the clothes on their backs. That's not even the good part. Now, once they're there, they will be forced to create their own cooperative society. Like deciding, you know, who's going to build the house, who's going to go hunt for food, who's going to start the fire. Uh, still not the good part. Now, in exchange for doing these tasks, they will receive <laughs> gifts like pillows... <laughs> soft drinks yeah. and food and stuff that they you know that they have no access to and, and therefore it becomes very valuable right. this is so great you could be amazed this comes from CBS I love the way it ends though it's the best the 16 people will be followed constantly by 10 cameras okay and they will also have many animals around them right like lizards and the lizards tend to steal food yeah giant so, lizards so what they're saying is when these people finally get food like for building a hut mm -hmm. at night while they're sleeping right the people from the tv crew they're gonna let these lizards go that eat their food sure okay but 
Here's here's the hook on this show, Survivor. This is where I, I think it's it's original and brilliant, yes. and it's going to be overwhelming to watch. I mean, it's like taking it to a different, almost what the the movies have shown us on mm -hmm. TV. At the end of every episode, and they're going to cram three days of living on this island into one episode. So at the end of three days, every three days, at the end of every one hour episode, the group will hold tribal council meetings. Like in the first episode, after the first three days on the island, mm -hmm. the 16 people get together. Sit, have a, uh, have a sit down. And every week, they have to vote to expel one member who will be exiled from the island. <laughs> this process of humiliation will go until only two people are left. And then the cool thing is, everybody that's been booted out will be able to vote between the last two survivors as to who wins the money. Oh, excellent. One million dollars. I mean, that is so cool. What you create, that you know what the thing that I read in that that, that absolutely amazed me was... Is that what that was on CBS? It, yes, of course, CBS. <laughs> is that they're bringing everyone back to vote on the last two, which to me makes it perfect. It, it makes it impossible to, to have somebody go, hey, you're out of here and I never have to see you again. <laughs> Even the people they kick out, yeah, they, you they, you they later get to come back and vote. Right. So you have so. to be cooperative and you have to also be tough. And you, I mean, it's incredible. It is simply the best idea I've heard for a TV show. <laughs> it, it, and I don't know how, it's yeah, the really. first time that I read something I thought, you know, Jesus Christ, I would watch that show yeah. In a heartbeat. It's like real world with a plot. Right? It's really like real oh, world. It's with gonna a, be better than real world because but my whole complaint. I mean, I'm, real saying, world. I'm saying real world. You know, with the with the live. You know, with the live aspect of it. Yeah, but with, with, my whole complaint with real world is that you take these these punks and like you put them in a beautiful beach house, right? Right. right exactly. Okay. This time you're going to take punks and you're going to put them in the middle of nowhere. And there's not going to be a fancy beach house. And there's not going to, they're not going to be on Maui. Right. They're not going to have faxes and cell phones and, and giant video screens. And then, you know, it comes down to two people and uh, then the whole gang. All the people who have already been F. I mean, how many, re how many times have you been rejected for something where you'd like to come back <laughs> and vote on one of the guys that yeah. rejected you? And I would, I would imagine, really, that at the very end, the last two people that are remaining are going to have people that hate them in, in, the, in the group of rejects. Now, of course, this is not an original idea. It's an idea that started in Sweden and the Netherlands. That's where this TV show was originated. Oh, really? I didn't know yes. that. And, and for the CBS version, they're going to make sure that they, don't, that they have a variety of people, meaning that they're not going to get all young, virile athletes. Right. Okay? Uh. They're going to have some people in good shape, but they're going to have some fat people, they're going to have some young people, and they're going to have some old people. But re what it really is going to be, and that's why I guess it's called survival, is because you, know, you have to have the people that are going to contribute most to the group. They're going to weed out the weak and the people. How that great is that? At the beginning. <laughs> How great is that? That is the greatest idea for a television show And you know when they get, ever. That, when they get down to the last few... You're going to have people there that are going to, you know, it's going to be, yeah, you what, me? me? You can't, you can't mean me. The people that are down at the, at the end are going to be, uh, you know, uh, incredulous. It's going to be like the Blair Witch Project if the Blair Witch Project was done good. You know, know what I mean? Yeah, one, of the, be cool. one of the producers says everything about this show is designed to create tension in the group. Oh, so, fantastic. you know, the conflicts that could happen on the air could be incredible. And you know what also I love? The stuff you could learn. I mean, I mean yes. it's obviously going to be a learning experience, right. too. I also love the fact that, they're, that they purposely, if they earn food, mm -hmm. they're going to let these animals go. Oh, right. that will crawl into their tents and eat their food. I love that. That is that. I well, the, that. the island of Borneo is uh, the it's 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 the fact that indigenous to sure, they're all, all these animals. animals. Yes, yeah, you know the macaws mm -hmm. or something like that. They were the wild birds. You know. So listen, if you want to, you know, if you want to join this, I think where's it say here? Applications are available now mm -hmm. at www.cbs.com. That's pretty cool. So that's how you do you it. You have to be 21 years old and a U.S. citizen to play. That's the greatest freaking idea for a TV show I've ever heard. Yeah. I'll watch that. Every week. It'll be really, really wonderful. Every week I would watch that show. And you know, you're going to have people that you love and people that you hate. So I mean, you're going to be, you know, the people that you're rooting for and they say, no, they threw him out. What's going on? That's but great. you're not there 24-7, you right. know. Vigilante justice. <laughs> I love it. Hello, Tim. Yeah, hey, Donna Mike. How's it going? Hey, buddy. Hey, I was living overseas in uh, Denmark last year. And they had a show called The Robinson Expedition. When it was it's pretty much, I guess they must have got the idea from this. Yeah, well, it said it, 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 the idea originally in the, in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it, it was crazy. It, I mean, it was on every week for I think twelve or fourteen weeks. Oh, and man, they would talk about you. You would hate people after about three or four weeks. Oh, that's I great. mean, they they put personalities together that was just. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were just clashing. Right See, I don't think you have to do that. I, I think you, you just put people together. You put 30, was it 39 people that are going to be on there? 16. 16, 16, 16 people. Okay. 16 people, you know, by the end of <laughs> time, it doesn't matter. They, they could all be out They could like the, you know, the same things, the same cake. <laughs> Hello, Kathy. Yeah. Hi. Hey. 
I just, I'm listening to you guys. I think, first of all, I think this is the most amazing idea ever. And second of all, how bitter are you going to be if you're like one of the last three people and they finally boot you off this island? Oh, you're going to be pissed. <laughs> you, if, if, if you're number three, you're going to be pissed, but you're even going to be you're more pissed. a million dollars away. If you're number two, I know. and all the people who you've already pissed on piss on you. Well, also, exactly. you know, when you realize that it's the privilege of winning one million dollars, but also the privilege of continuing to exist without any, you know, any supplies on this, uh, you know, island. You're going to get people that are the at the very end. You're going to yeah. have to be, have people that are dealing with the rejection, love also it. dealing with the fact that I've been on this stinking island for this many days. Um, I, I I can't imagine. I love it. Because the only way they're going to let you stick around is if you like schluck for them, right? You're going to have to be like slave girl and volunteer and do every crazy you know, job available. That's what's great. I I don't know. I guess that's how it might work out in some tribes. Well, it's actually going to be cooperative. That's what right. that's what it's really got to be. It's got to be forced cooperation, and then at the very end, you're going to have you know the smaller the group gets. The the more people you have that, that are saying, hey, it's going to be me, it's going to be me. And then, oh, but yet they great. have to cooperate so the other guy doesn't vote him out. It's brilliant. It's great. brilliant. Who would have thought that idea came from CBS? <laughs> <laughs> from CBS. The same network that continues to give us any freaking pot. <laughs> <laughs> who would have thought? Uh, Robbie, who's that girl that loved that loved Broy Hill? Park Overall. Park Overall. There you go. The, the same network that gave us Swoozy Kurtz <laughs> has finally given us a great show. <laughs> Hello there, Derek. Yes, how you doing? Derek in hey. Bakersfield, CA. Yeah, hey, you get the, so the 14 people that get booted, they're going to vote. What if they got seven voting for one and seven voting for the other? So they're screwed or what? You know, I bet that they got a tiebreaker a tie procedure. I bet they do. I don't know. That's a good so question. Who, break the, who, who breaks the tie? I, Derek, I'm not the producer. I just read about the show. Well, it would be, oh, you it'd be 16 people. No, no, well, no. Right? Down to two. Two. You start with 16. Yeah, you have, you have you get two down to two. End. So yeah. there would be the chance of a 7-7. Seven seven right, right. right. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Hey, guys. Hey, Happy buddy. birthday, Buzz. Thanks. Hey, uh, I'm wondering if the, uh, are there going to be men and women and maybe get a little island boosh going there? Well, Some it's a, fun in the sun, if you know what I mean? It's a CBS show, so I, I bet that there wouldn't be that. I mean, it really, I mean, uh, as much as people think about sex all the time, you're dealing with a situation where they're survivalists, right? And they're trying to win a million bucks. I mean, so everybody's going to be kind of focused on that. And I would also imagine that with the, the way they're weeding people out here, that it's going to be a relatively even playing field, even at the beginning of the game. But you, are there going to be men and women both? Yes. Yes. And you know what? I, I would think that you probably wouldn't, your mind wouldn't be on romance. Your mind is on surviving. Winning the money. And yeah. getting the money. Right. Absolutely. 39 days is a right. long time. All right. Though. Hello, Nathan. Yes. Yes. What? I was just uh, talking about the TV show. Uh, if all 16 people agreed to split the split the money, it'd still be a good chunk of change. You know what? This, you know what? This is this is what I hate. Like when we when we come up with an idea on right. this show, that's great, and we go with it. Nathan, I just want to tell you something. I, I really hate people like you. I swear to God, I do. I, I swear to freaking God, I do. You know, uh, damn you! I, I, every creative bone in my body spits on you, man. Really? F you. I mean that. <laughs> It's not even. It's not even my idea. I'm just like somebody has a great idea, and yeah. right away the naysayers. This guy's mm -hmm. got to call up and go, "Hey, well, well, what if they all did this?" Oh, kiss my ass, Nathan. Go watch South Park. Nathan. Nathan. Hello. Right. Thanks for listening. See you later. All right. Bye bye. <laughs> It, that went well. I understand where you're coming from, though. I too. mean, really? Because we're all, you got three guys in here that are legitimately jacked up. Yeah. Well, when is the last time you saw a truly creative original idea on, on network television? Never. It doesn't happen. <clears throat> this is it. So you see something that really was uh, is fascinating. And, you know, just to satisfy some of the cynics, okay, there will probably be documents a mile long of preventing course. any kind of fraud. And, you know, in the game show racket of any kind, on any level, fraud it is illegal nowadays. You know, way back in the days of uh, 21, 21, it was a different story. But now, 21. no, you can't have that. That's not oh, I just work. hate that. I know. I really do. But if they all decide to agree, and bow out, you know, in a fantasy land. Yeah, no. Yeah, well, that, and that's why you have a million shows like Three's Company. And the fact is, uh, for that guy, people they, aren't creative, man. The, the, the premise of the show, they are going to have to cooperate. Mm -hmm. they, but it has nothing to do with who's going to eventually win the money. They have right. to cooperate to survive and also to stay on the island longer. Hello, last call. Jamie. Hi, Jamie. Yeah, I mean, it can't be any worse than spending 90 days out on the line if you're in the service. Or... Yeah, right. Absolutely. That's and a I good analogy. 
you've got to learn to, to, to like each other because you're going to end up biting the hand that feeds you if right. you don't. Absolutely. Right. Gotcha. Thank you, Jamie. You know, you I, bet, I bet your romances do arise on the island, and people are going to use that as a chip what? to form friendships that can benefit them later on. Because they'll really be thinking about every angle to make people happy. That's actually what you're hoping for, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, it's a great idea. Yeah, it is. And I think in case of a tie, how about this? I bet we can all agree on this. In case of a tie, <laughs> let Mel break the tie. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Right? Every week you put Mel on TV. Yeah. I, you you know. know. We're deadlocked. Right. Let's go to Mel Carmison. Outside of bringing the ship over and releasing the wild ponies. <laughs> <laughs> you have to see Mel's big face on TV, looking at all the people. Maybe with a swami hat. <laughs> <laughs> what haven't I done for you? <laughs> um, uh, him. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Right. Show over. That guy. Plus, <laughs> what is your lead story tonight on the news or comments? Joyous news tonight. The end is in sight for Jesus. syphilis. <laughs> really? Really? Oh, oh, Joyous oh, news for you, Siffy. Happy birthday oh, to me. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. For news and comments. News and comments. Coming up. Coming up. On the Don and Mike Show. Don and Mike Show. That was very uh, professional. This is the Don and Mike Stay tuned for your chance to name that yeah, song for 1000 bucks only on the Don and Mike Show. I'm the one telling you how it is. It's another Don and Mike Las Vegas-style show. Don't miss out on the legendary fun and the top-notch adult entertainment. And now, here's Timmy Obagone to tell you more. Wednesday, October 20th, the entire Don and Mike crew heads to the garage in Washington, D.C., my hometown. The garage is at the intersection of Connecticut and it's in in Northwest D.C. you got to be 21 to get in. Call 202-331-7123 for information or directions. I'll see you there. The Don and Mike Las Vegas style show. Don't miss it. Let's go, girl. The rather Moses-like Don Geronimo and Michael Mara. All right, we're still on the air. Here now is <laughs> Buzz Siffy. Happy birthday. Happy happy 55th, Buzz. Thank you, Don and Mike. I feel much younger than that. Um, I guess it's because of my birthday. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta <laughs> says we have an opportunity here to wipe out the sexually transmitted disease known as syphilis, or Fantastic. Sif for short. Did they call you at home personally with this news? Yes, they did. I was very excited, as were they, of course. Hello, Mr. Burbank. Well, you found a cure. You must be very proud. <laughs> I am. Except for a few hot spots, such as Baltimore. <laughs> you're in your groin. <laughs> no, no, just Baltimore in this country. Infections are down by 19% in the past year to a new all-time low. That's good news. Hooray for the battle against syphilis. What's up? <laughs> uh, you can now sue your HMO. Enough Republicans jumped on the bandwagon to help Democrats pass the Patients' Rights Bill. With you a... say you could sue your homo? Homo, HMO. Right. Homo. Homo. Why would I sue Homo Joe? You don't, you don't want to sue Homo Joe here. Why? Why are you litigating? Why <laughs> sue <sorry>, me? <laughs> it passed with a wide margin of victory, thanks to members of the two parties joining together. President Clinton supports the measure, which would allow us to sue our managed care plans for, Hi, this is surf. for damages with no limits on those lawsuits. Uh, the makers of the diet drugs known as Fenfen and Redux are ready to shell out some money. They've agreed to cough up... Rob may want to listen to this. They, they've agreed to cough up three and three quarters billion dollars to people who claim they were injured by the drugs and to cover the future monitoring of people who've had no Fenfen health-related problems so far. Mm. Licorice? <laughs> that was one of your... Mm. Mm. Stories there. Mm. Yes, yeah, mm. we just thought Rob. Mm. Rob said mm, more than most. Yeah, that buys a lot of donuts. I know it does. Mm. Mm. Licorice can make a man limp, and I'm not talking about walking. An really? item. And That's I, right. Yes, an item in the latest New England Journal of Medicine says the active ingredient in licorice suppresses the testosterone levels, and it did in an experiment involving seven men in their twenties. Oh man, all that good and plenty. Just <laughs> seven grams of licorice a day over four days was enough. Charlie an says, <laughs> "Never get it up again." <laughs> Charlie says, "You'll be limp." <laughs> Charlie <laughs> says, <laughs> seven grams a day over four days was enough to reduce the amount of." Sex 
sex hormones by an average of 44%. And for licorice lovers, that's not an unusual amount of licorice, 7 grams a day. And that same active ingredient is also found in some breath fresheners and other candies, so you may want to read the labels. Wow. Especially if you're having that particular problem. Candy is dandy, but sex won't rot your teeth. <laughs> Who just farted? Charlie Broyhill, my partner, came in and said, I just want to leave you with this. All right, because I smell the air freshener. I don't smell the fart. I just smell the I air mean, freshener. I, but I smell something now. Now that you mentioned I got a little something over here. It's yeah. a good just, cocktail back just here. Just a little taste. <laughs> just a little, little taste of Broyhill. Donald Trump seems to be getting more serious about running for president. Oh, please. Today, he announced the formation of an exploratory committee. The committee's job would be to see if he has a chance of winning the White House as a candidate for the Reform Party. Wingnut for president. <laughs> yeah. uh, tonight, he's meeting with... Oh, wingnut. <laughs> meeting... Oh, you know, it's official because he's meeting with Jesse Ventura tonight. Yeah, another wingnut. Who's the highest ranking office holder in the party. A wingnut. A wingnut. <laughs> the race for the nomination would be between Trump and Pat Buchanan. Who's backed by the hey, Ross another wing nut. Three wing nuts. He's backed by the Ross Perot oh, wing of the party. Four wing nuts. Man, incredible. We got four wing nuts. Get, in a get, tree. Up, get two more buzz, you got a six pack going. I can't six pack of wing nuts. I can't imagine why Oprah said no when they came to her. Uh, Trump says he's very mm -hmm. serious, very confident, and that he'll make a final decision no later than February on whether he's running. You know, you might want to hit the fag thing, but I think of all that group, Oprah would probably make the best president. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Thank you, Don. That's very nice of you not to play the fag thing. He's He's gonna play it now. Uh -oh. He's gonna play it now. He's gonna stick around it for God's sake. I see you. Uh -oh. I'm, I'm in the same studio, Dan. Oh! There it is. All right. Thank you very much. The real, the real estate billionaire is registered as a Republican and says he most closely identifies with Ronald Reagan. Hello, I'm Donald Trump for the wingnut party. <laughs> <laughs> Memo to the King of Queens and to Mike O'Mara, actually to Don now, who now has the UPS outfit. Yes. UPS says it plans to stop delivering handguns through its regular service. Oh, no. Mostly to prevent the theft of weapons. Yeah, I got a, a delivery here for the ladies. <laughs> man, this is heavy. The United States. I got a delivery for a Mrs. Francis Liddy? That's right. It's very heavy, ma'am. They all, belong, they all belong to her. I want to use two hands, please. The United Parcel Service says it will, from now on, ship handguns only through its next day air service, which costs three to four times as much as ground service. But when you absolutely got to have a gun overnight, <laughs> right, it's the way to go. The air service is more controlled. It's an entirely separate system with fewer people involved, reducing the chance of gun theft. Yeah, because that's what you want to do with handguns. Send them on planes. And faster. <laughs> uh, the company says it'll ship long guns, rifles, and shotguns by ground transportation. Buzzy, time out. Please, more news. More comment coming right up. This is been a by Zeb. Bye. Wait, you're going? Ah, oh, dry your eyes. Yeah, I'm just going home. Grab a shower and a shave. Give the wife a little pickle tickle and I'm on my way. I'll see you. All right, watch. I'll get the right station this time. All right? If you're listening in the Great Pacific Northwest, uh, the current time is 3.39. And if you're in Seattle, you're listening to KRKO. City Men, Don Geronimo, and Michael Mara. K-R-K-O. You got it. Ace it. That's our station in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And now back to Sippy the Elson player. On his 55th birthday. Imagine that. Okay. Video. <laughs> Video game makers are telling senators that the way to stop youth violence is to limit kids' access to guns, not to video games. Well, now that makes sense. The senators are worried, though, about games such as Bloody Roar, Duke Nukem's Time to Kill. Oh, and that's a good one. And Bloody Roar. Is that, uh, is that any good? Do you know anything about no, that but, one? No, uh, but Duke Nukem... The whole series is excellent. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm stumped on Kingpin. Have you ever played Kingpin? No, and you told me about it because it's not about the Woody Harrelson movie, right? No, it's not about the Woody Harrelson movie, but it's uh, like it's got a lot of language. Ah, a lot oh, of right, where they say the F word all the time. F and money. And then there's the F and money. There's also <laughs> MDK, which stands for Murder, Death, Kill. Do you have that one? No, I don't. Ah, well. I like those shooting games. <laughs> Realness is common. It's a great way to diffuse all your violent sentences. <laughs> Keeps people from being on top of buildings. <laughs> That's good. Uh, some senators have talked about banning the games, though, but game makers have instead proposed a rating system, E, for... For everyone, T, T, I'm a mastermind. T for teens, 13 to 17, M for the 17 and over crowd, and A for adults only. Hey. Hey. E. She named the night. <laughs> this, this video game is rated E. She named the night. I have created this video game because I am a mastermind. <laughs> Here's a radical idea. Nevada's Mustang Ranch may soon be... 
in the horse business. The former whorehouse, now owned again by Uncle Sam, has been suggested as a home for some of the 22,000 wild horses that populate Nevada. The ranch would train the animals and put them up for adoption. I hope they uh, get wildfire on that ranch. Yeah. My favorite horse. Michael Murphy. He died, you know, at the end of the song. He did. Wildfire, yeah, I think he died. Oh, that's why he was singing so sad. That's right. Yeah. Uh, the Mustang Ranch, from wild women to wild horses. There you have it. Here is a tape of my favorite horse, Buzz. There's one that worked this out. I can't do it physically anymore. Uh, John Elway. <laughs> Your favorite Bronco. And that's really hard for me to say. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Somebody just sucked a button off my shirt. I, I can't do it physically button. anymore. Uh, Watch this. Uh, I'm going to put a man. That's really hard for me to say. Oh, Ooh. my fingernail. My right fingernail just was sucked off my finger. <laughs> Choked there. A World Wrestling Federation star may be paralyzed for life, covered with tattoos. And Incredible! Tattoos and body piercings. And I, I forgive me, if I because I don't watch the wrestling, so I don't know. What's the, the name? Is it the Draws? The Droz? The Draws? How do you spell the buzz? D-R-O-Z. The draws. Yeah. He fractured his neck. You know, somebody will call. We'll know. He fractured his neck Tuesday night during a match with rival, and I'm going to screw this one up, too. It's D apostrophe L-O. Delo? Delo Brown in New York? Anyway. Delo. The 30-year-old. <laughs> you know, Charlie knew. The 30-year-old whose real name is Darren Drozdov, Drozdov, I guess, was instantly paralyzed from the waist down. The 6'4", 270-pound wrestler then faced three hours of surgery. This is the second pro wrestling tragedy in just five months. Owen Hart, known as the Blue Bye. Blazer. Oh, died after was. a 90-foot plunge in Kansas City. Here comes all of our rash love experts. Good. Hello, good. Don and Mike. Hey, guys, I can tell you the deal with draws. Okay, We draws. just want to know the name. Is that the name? Yeah, well, this is Johnny Fairplay. Johnny Fairplay. Right, the Johnny. skinny Johnny Thank Fairplay. You. Goodbye, Johnny. Hello, Don and Mike show. Yes, that is Draws and D-Lo. 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 Okay, draws and D-Lo. Thank you, Thank you Buzz. Now, Our audience steps up with his wrestling. I man. appreciate it. Now I know. But his wrestling, they know. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, the other day when uh, Lee was on Letterman, did you think to help buy? <laughs> well, we hadn't thought of that. <laughs> that might work. Somebody ought to suggest it on a way that Leah Remini could relax the next time she goes on David Letterman. Well, we're going out there, uh, and we're going to go on her show, and we're going to be nervous. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Speak for yourself, Yeah, there's one person that's Incredible. enjoying that. Incredible. Realize one person in that in our audience is enjoying that joke right now. <laughs> Just what you sick bastard. And all of us in this room. Uh, this Draws, the Drozdoff, also I mentioned him because he played football at the University of Maryland and was later signed by the New York Jets and also the Denver Broncos. I can't believe it. Somebody getting paralyzed by being dropped on their head. Hard to believe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't move my legs. <laughs> We have the tape. Well, hold on. Let me squeeze another commercial set. In. All right. Right back. This is where the the combat. This is the Don. This is the Don and Mike Show. I got to tell you, nothing better than a holiday Monday. I had a panic moment when I woke up this morning. I felt like, uh-oh, I got to go to work. And I was like, no, I don't. I can just lay here and scratch and touch all morning. Men die to give you this holiday, right? I appreciate it. Otherwise, I'd be touching myself in Nazi Germany. Warning may cause loose stools and fecal urgency. The Don and Mike Show. Bye, Don. Ladies and gentlemen, Don Geronimo on the park. That's a good beat. That is a good beat. That is a good beat. Hi, Buzz. Hi, hi, hi Mixmaster Master Donnie. Hi, Don and Mike. The tabloids are busy, very busy, trying to track down the woman they're just sure broke up the 12-year marriage of Geraldo Rivera. This is what the tabloids are focusing on. One of the suspects is an editor at the Fox News Channel who goes by the name Voodoo Lulu. When she oh, right. plays in her rock and roll band. Sure, Voodoo Lulu. Sure, Ooh, baby. The other, hey, the, other hey, is, <laughs> the other is a former staff member who worked with Geraldo, a 26-year-old mystery gal from New Jersey, described as a quiet girl-next-door type. One report says Geraldo's marriage to C.C. Dyer fell apart when she found pictures of her husband on his yacht with another woman. I says, see? C.C. Ryan. I'll see. C.C. Ryan. I have a mastermind. <laughs> George Clooney says... Clooney? He probably will pop up on an episode of, or two of ER, but not until the end of the season. 
Clooney says the producers have asked him to come back at around the time Juliana Margulies leaves the show. Rebecca De Mornay is on ER now. Yes, and, and she enhances it. Even though she is a little long in the tooth, so, she makes she still makes that heat. Mm -hmm. Putting her together with that Noah Wiley is a brilliant move because those two have chemistry. And Noah Wiley, he is like a Kmart version of David Duchovny, I think. I think that's a pretty good analysis. I think that's perfect. And he, with her, though, uh, you know, there's just, you know, he's like the, the young little innocent, and, and she's like, well, hey there, big boy. And chicks seem to dig him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the script is... Uh, he Thanks, Artie. He says, uh, he says he'll come back. Looney will come back as long as the script is good. He says the show got stale after he left. Hey, it's not like he can be choosy. Clooney's been less than successful at the box office, and HBO has now decided not to carry the Larry Sanders-like show he was making for their cable network. What was possible Larry Sanders-type show could a big doofus like George Clooney do? Uh, it was going to be called Kilroy, and it was going to be about a young actor, like a 20-something guy, who was trying to make it in Hollywood, and they were going to have him, I guess, go actually try out for real TV shows or some kind of behind-the-scenes thing like that. Yeah. That's, that's what HBO said, and that's why you'll never see it. Now, maybe just put Clooney on a desert island and say, <laughs> we'll be back in a year, live. You know what show I can't figure out HBO runs? What? I mean, you know, you got Sopranos, it's great. Right, right. Sex in the City. Based I'm on, on the novel by Candace Bush Bushnell. You've got nothing to offer. <laughs> I've, I've been on record. I don't get the show, but my wife likes it. A lot of people do. Right. Okay. Then you go down the ladder to Tracy Takes On. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even every once in a while... You know, I think it's Tracy funny. Ullman's funny. Right. She is funny, and it's just the show just... Uh, well, but once in a while, right, it's she's okay. Funny, right? The show I can't understand, yeah. and the show that I should like the best, right. is Arliss. Arliss sucks. Why does Arliss stay on HBO? I just saw a promo last night where they said, coming an all-new season of Arliss. Because Robert Wool will be out there churning them out, probably working for very little money relative to the other guys, and just right. churn them out and churn them out and churn them out, and that's that's what they, they need product. You know, it's like everything. You know, it's like what that guy said at Letterman last night. They're filling time. Right. And that's what it really comes down to. That show just blows, though. <laughs> Arliss. Yeah. And that's a show that if you were to look at it on paper, you'd think someone like me would love. Oh, um, and it could be funny. A sports agent. Right. And they actually get real professional athletes to do cameos and stuff. You make it more like Jerry Maguire, and you've got a very funny and a very, you know unlimited plot supplies right. and, and you'd be all set but it's just, what it is it's horrible crappy writing that's the whole deal yeah. and him and yeah I think that's true and Robert well he's yeah. a lot of the problem yeah, because everything is just supposed to be like this <laughs> he used to be funny he was funny back in those like Porky's kind of movies right, right back when <laughs> I forgot he was in Porky's <laughs> Robert Wool I love Porky's what the hell is his name too he had a funny name he had a funny funny the only name. one I remember from, from Porky's is Pee Wee do you remember Pee Wee <laughs> yeah. Pee Wee was always trying to get laid the second half of his name was Bomb. It was something like something bomb. Was it Nuss Bomb? I'm not sure. Mm. I don't know, but he was good in Porky's. Right, he no was. Doubt. He was funny in there. You know what I watched last weekend? Right. You ever see the Porky's 2? Oh, yeah, Porky's no. 2 is a good movie. Yeah, it's like Porky's semicolon a new beginning or something. Of course. Was, was meat in that one? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Meat. <laughs> yes, and uh, the school nurse was in it. Ballbricker? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Great. I used to love the Porky's movies. Paul Ricker was, was seriously. That's the ugliest woman I think that's ever been on camera. <laughs> he used to love. Uh, you know what? Here again, our phones are ringing. Uh, somebody has some information we were looking for. Hello? Yeah, he was in Hollywood Nights. Hollywood not Porky's. Nights. He was right. New Bomb. He was New Bomb in uh, Hollywood Nights. Yeah, I always get in those movies. Malari. I get those movies mixed up. Well, Hollywood Nights and Porky's is virtually the yeah, same movie. Absolutely. Much better. New Hollywood Bomb. Nights. A <laughs> New Bomb. Thank you. This is the end of the Don and Mike show. Tomorrow, tomorrow, Westwood One.